Welcome to the Wednesday, November 15, 2017 Select Board Board of Health meeting here in the Deerfield Municipal Offices. I would like to announce the meeting is being broadcast and recorded as we speak. We will start with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Trevor had a um, slight uh, family emergency, so he will be showing up as soon as he can. Um, so we're going to move ahead and do our minutes. We have minutes of November 1st, uh, both the executive session and our regular meeting. I move to accept the minutes of November 1st, 2017. And I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I move to accept the minutes of November 1st of the executive session. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, select board uh, announcements. Um, Kip, you had a notice from the Captain Lager, or to the Captain Lager residents. It was a handout. Uh, I put something together. I did get it from them. Oh, you? Um, um, I think I saw. It. I have it. Yeah, it should be in the folder. Yep. Yeah. Here it is. We need to Perfect. Thank you. We just did the minutes. Spit it up a bit. Yeah. It was just a basic outline to, you know, to send. But the, the photograph didn't come out real well, but it's. Uh, um. So this is what you were going to do more or put yeah. it in the tax bill. Or more? Either way. Okay. Maybe even both. Okay. I I think it's worth. Um, I mean, this is an ongoing issue, so I think yep. it's worth to try to do as much as we can for outreach. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and everyone bears the cost for that. Um, I just, I had a quick announcement of what really is a thank you. I just wanted to thank um, John Pachorek, uh, Kevin Scarborough, our Hawaii department um, superintendent, and Zach Smith, our EMS director, for attending and participating in the um, EDS tabletop EOC drill this past November 6th last Monday at the elementary school. Um, I was, it just makes me feel very good that we have such a good team. They have very good comments, very good input throughout the drill. And um, I, I felt it was really productive. We haven't been able to do our drive up drill for a couple of years now. Uh, actually, I think this is the third year because we haven't had free vaccine. Right. So um, having this EOC drill means that we updated our volunteer list. We we did our unified command, which is Conway, Sunderland, Waitley, and Deerfield together, and we operated our um, section chiefs, which was the planning, um, finance, operational, and uh, logistics groups, and um, it was very successful. So anyway, it was nice. And I guess the only other announcement, I know people have been anxious or inquiring about um, special town meetings, and I just want to say, it's our intention, uh, the select board's intention, to schedule a special town meeting this winter, sometime this winter, to vote on um, really marijuana-related stuff. It's, we, we definitely want to get a 3% tax. We have to vote to um, tax anybody, um, and we want that for the local um, uh, revenue. And we also have to decide um, the, the number of facilities we want in town. We want to cap it one to two. We haven't really decided on the board. We haven't had a lot of discussion, but it would be in the neighborhood of one to two. And then also um, our zoning right now is 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 really restricted to just um, medicinal marijuana. So we need to um, look at the district and see if we want to alter the district to make it indifferent for recreational um, marijuana and then also um, just designate areas for cultivation. So we will get those issues done um, as things um, progress on the state level. It's just, it's very hard to schedule a meeting and then have to keep reacting to changes on the state level. But um, the Selectmen's Association had um, a commissioner there and they seem to be um, actually trying to get their act together and, they, and I was very actually impressed um, this was is going much more smoothly 
It doesn't seem like it, but it is that from following DPH, the Department of Public Health, through the medicinal, um, medicinal process, Dick and I really struggled because every we were right there in the first meetings, and every time you turned around, there was a change, a change, a change, and it seems like they're locking down their decisions so that we can lock down our decisions. But the main thing is, I don't want to lose. Um, our local revenue tax, and you have to vote the tax in before um, a uh, license is given. So and we, they're able to start applying for licenses. I think it's April first. Yes. And then so we waited until the end of April for our town meeting. We'd be a little yeah. behind the eight ball. So well, we just don't want to miss have any, correct miss out a year of revenue. Mm -hmm. So um, we're going to do that. Okay. Um, it's uh, 6.05 and um, Mr. Abington has been here and um, you're not, actually not scheduled to 6.30 but why don't you come on up and because uh, I, I think this will be relative. Are you from the Rotary Club? Yes, I am. They're scheduled at 6.15, right? That's okay. Yeah. I have got one more person on the way. Oh, oh okay. Thank you. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I've, they've been here for a while so I'm just wow. going to bump them up. Um, I know it's it's hard to say. I just listen. <laughs> so I'm excited. Uh, <laughs> so you're here for um, your class two application. Yes. Okay. Um, how many motor vehicles do you plan to sell? And so what kind the, were you thinking of? The ZBA planning board, etc., have approved us for 12 retail spaces at this property um, out front. So that's where we're at there. Our biggest goal is with that license, it allows us to have a repair plate. So when we need to pick up a trailer to be repaired or a vehicle, in the sense of a motorhome, let's say, we can actually transport it without additional cost to towing a tow truck company when we're perfectly capable of transporting it ourselves. Okay. Um, but we will have 12 retail on front. So what I'd like to do is, um, what we want to do then is make a motion for oh. no more than two trailers and well, a couple cars? No, because you need a special permit to sell the cars, and he doesn't have that. No, we're for the RV side. For, for the uh, trailers. So what I, you know, I don't know. I tried to find out, and I was unsuccessful. I don't know if the state differentiates from class two licenses. No. In that I don't, I don't think so, because I talked to Dick. Dick went up with Kyle, and they actually made a site visit today right. um, to yes, verify, or, or was it yesterday? I didn't see anybody today. I wasn't there yesterday. They were. Um, but anyway, he went to verify that they had room for um, 12, mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, um, and then you could add in two cars. See how it goes. I don't think you can because it's our zoning bylaws are pretty clear for selling automobiles, and you have there's a whole different site plan review for that and everything. And yeah, I I feel very uncomfortable, you know, stepping on their their toes. You know, we're approving something uh, that allows this gentleman to do something that you know hasn't followed the proper per, uh, process. You know? Are you asking to sell cars or just the trailers? It would be nice if it's available, but that's not our main focus there. My big focus is being able to not only sell the uh, vintage trailer, new trailer, or consignment, but there may be a motorhome, for example, that that might fall under. Um, or there could be that potential that I have a customer, let's say you came to me and have a trailer, but you're looking for a tow vehicle, we can go to the auction and get it for you. New vehicle, no. Um, but that would be a, a nice offer to do. But our biggest thing is uh, the state does not have a designated license for RV people. So we have to fall underneath the class two classification, unfortunately, in order to even get a plate at that point. So that's our primary focus. But if we were allowed to have two vehicles, that'd be great, because we do do some anti-car stuff from time to time. But you would, you would need to go back to the zoning board. Yeah, we're, we've been the through enough, I don't okay. think that. You know what I'm saying, Carol? Yeah. Oh, so, no, 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 that's fine. Dick, Dick and had if, just... And if, you don't, and if you do it this way, they'll be lining up at our doors, you know, oh. trying to sidestep that whole process, you know. Uh, no, that's fine, because Dick, Dick um, so, had, had well, outlined 
we have a few how very, how very that's what's in the zoning in the special permit for the CBA. Twelve trailers is what it said in the yeah. Okay. Twelve RVs, yeah. How how do we I guess put that how do we um, I don't know how you how do you how do you do this? What you just make you approve the license um, with a limit of twelve trailers. And you, you specifically put on the license mm -hmm. I don't know if you can do that. Can you do that? Yeah. Well, why could you not do that? Well, I guess um, it. Class two is half of that. Uh, right. If we need a license, and then that's what they, as he said, I, I, I understand that. So if we issue the license, a class two license, and then he starts selling cars, he goes say, say well, I got a class two license. I can do that. You know, and then you, you see what we're creating. Yeah. So where's the, where's the? And, and what I'm wondering is, do we have the authority to say? Okay, we'll issue you a class two license restricting it to 12. So trailers. Can you fill me in, Kip, on the process of uh, if it wasn't, um, if he was coming in before the board for cars, is there a, is there a process sure. you just mentioned it with yes. something else you go through? You have to go to the, the zone. First of all, you have to get a special permit from the zoning board, and then you have to go for site plan review through the planning board. It's a whole for for car sales. Okay. Motor vehicle sales. And then that covers RVs. Motorcycles. Uh, there's even a section, but I think they addressed it. I'm yes. Pretty sure they addressed the outdoor display area, Correct. the trailers. Correct. Sort of so through the whole process, we've been open about what we do as a business. Our focus mm -hmm. is the trailer side, but we are a fabrication shop. Um, what's the potential? You kept saying I've got a trailer and I need a tow vehicle with a class two. Yeah, you could go to the auction and buy. Sure, and, and that's not, I, I don't have a problem with it, yeah. but what I'm saying is if, if we just do this, right. then the guy across the street could come say, I want to start opening up a used car lot, sure. and I want, I want to get the same license that he gave to the other guy, and we do the same thing with you know, the planning board and the ZBA board, you know, you got these bylaws. And you're saying this, this application right here bypasses that process. If, it, if we allow it for motor vehicles, it does. Sure. For cars, for anything but, but, but trailers. If, anything but trailers. Yeah. But if you're, if you're going on the suggestion that uh, Dick had provided with two vehicles, that's not a car lot. So I'd never be able to be a car lot, as what you're referring to. It doesn't matter if you have At that point. It doesn't matter if you have one or. Yeah. Because it also, um, I guess, if I had a person come in and want to sell their motor home, if, I think that might be where Dick was going with that statement. Is probably to allow a customer if they want to consign a uh, motorhome or if we had well, to motor, a motorhome would not be covered under this license if we restrict it to 12 trailers. trailers. Right. right. Well, I, I think, think that's, that's what, what, I'm, what I'm saying to you is I don't know if we can do that. And that's why I tried to, I tried to reach out to the registry. But it was good. Yeah. I was, so do you, do you want to do more research on this for? I kind of think we should find out because I, I don't want us to do something wrong, you know. Oh, well, why don't we issue it for the 12 trailers and then amend it if we can find more information for, to include the cars. Yeah. yeah, I would be interested in that aspect because through the whole process we've been open about that. And I know there's been a lot of details thrown around, so it would be right. nice to clarify that. Kip's concern is as soon as you open Pandora's box. Right. It's if done. you do that, mm -hmm. and then we find out we can't restrict it. Now we've issued him a license, and you know, every other person that wants one to just come say, come right here, and they can sidestep the zoning. Yeah. But at the same, but at the same hand, through this whole process, DBA, planning board, etc., it has been brought to the attention every step of the way for this with a site plan of 12, actually we reduced it from 15 down to 12 spots. Right. Everybody's aware of what we're going to do, what we intended to do, sure. and try to express all that. And, and I understand that, and I don't have okay. a problem with that. Yeah. Sure. What I'm saying to you is that we need to find out what the difference is, is if we as a board have sure. the right to give you a license to sell trailers, but restrict it so you can't sell cars. It would be a good question to answer because I've contacted uh, RMV in Boston trying to find out details is what is, what isn't. And right. right now the Commonwealth does not have any form of licensing specifically to RVs or motor homes. Yeah. In fact, they state that it's up to the individual municipalities 
to set the licensing requirements in that sense. Mm -hmm. Well, so we base this on a recommendation from, from Dirk Kalashevsky, the 12 and the 2. So. And I just talked to him this afternoon. So, I mean, I, I feel relatively comfortable that we can restrict this based on my conversation with Dick. And if you can't? I mean, Dick, I mean, I, trust me, I, I understand and, and I trust Dick too, but I mean, it's either the town council or the register of motor vehicles that needs to tell us. Well, and if we. We, we can um, wait for two more weeks. Is that going to be a problem for you? We are actually out of state. We are actually at our V convention in Louisville. Next, you mean at the next meeting? Yeah. yeah. Would we need him here to approve it though? Oh, I don't think so. Okay. No. I mean, if you want to wait, we can clarify this. I mean, I'm comfortable issuing it with conditions. Yeah, I've clarified as best I can. I'm calling to a state myself, but if Kip would like to, well, it isn't. It isn't. Feel more comfortable. It's, it's, it's fine. If, if we, if we do something that yeah. we shouldn't have done, it's hard. We're, to it puts us in a bad position. Yeah. You know? I myself wouldn't be knocking on your door, you know, for that because our focus is the RV yes. side of things, and not right. the car side. Right. And the and question really is with this EPA, do they intend with this to, you know, just restrict the the trailers, recreational vehicles, yeah. not yeah. even addressing in their... That was our focus, was for the car. RV side, if we have an RV or motor home, that needs to be sold. That's our focus. So what does it make sense, as you were suggesting, to issue it for the 12 uh, trailers, whatever, and, and not... Uh, and we, we know that Dick has checked it out for 12 trailers, so 12 is fine. Right, and, and that's not the issue. Though. I know, right. I know. It's not the issue. But if I'm, you, I'm afraid you're opening Pandora's box. If you, if you, if you, if you don't mind, we will just. Um, you don't need to come in. I don't. I don't think any of us have any issues. No, Do you no, have any questions? I, I, no, I don't. If you should let us sure. know so we can ask him ahead of time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, if it, if it does allow to allow us to do two, I'd appreciate that. Because who's right. to say there's not that client right. that does ask us to get them a tow vehicle, per se, or an antique car to tow their car, their trailer. Right, but that, that in itself creates the problem. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I see where you're coming because from. Because the zoning board, you know, they would say, hey, you know, you don't have, you don't have that authority. That, that's our thing. And then the site plan review, you know, the same thing. They're going to ask you the same, same question. Well, what we can so, do in two weeks is try to coordinate this so sure. it's not so painful for you. Yeah, I <laughs> appreciate that. It's too late. <laughs> yeah, right. It's been a long process. I do know that um, talking with all the boards and I don't get an eye of discussions, I know we, uh, if it goes back to that question of, can you do a car lot, that type of thing. And it comes back to, well, you need to have X amount of spaces for customers to come and see those cars. We do have more than sufficient. So if that was ever a question, you'll know that. It, 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 it isn't that, that. and it, it's, I'm not even against the car. All sure. I'm saying is it's the process. Covering. So yeah. if, 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 that's some, if, if that is your intention, which is fine, and I have no objections, you just go to the ZBA, tell them this is what you want to do. Sure. And you know they say this is what you got to do, and you comply, and they say fine, you move on. And I've been through enough of the processes <laughs> here in town. I'm pretty much trying to just to operate at this point. Right. So, I but know. if it was an option, I would, I wouldn't mind it. Sure, sure, you know. Sense. But is it going to be our focus now? Right. Well, then we'll try to straighten out for you between now and um, our next meeting is the 29th. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to be here. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I don't have any questions. I don't. Okay. okay. All right. We'll just try to make it uh, as simple. simple. <laughs> no, it's, it's a good question. I appreciate I, it. And, and I'm sorry because I, yeah. actually, um, I actually, you know, made a point to contact Dick and then have Dick go up there and you know to verify that everything was okay. So I'm sorry. Yeah, because I don't know. He stopped. I, I, I spoke with him. I didn't him realize himself. that that was a. Yeah, because because as it appears, yeah. it, there's nothing stopping me from selling an RV as it sits right now because it's already approved because there is no licensing for that. Right. So that's where that kind of throws that little bit of a pickle in the jar. Oh, there. I see. I see. Okay. But in order for us to have a repair plate, you have to have a dealer's mm -hmm. license. Yeah. So then that's where they throw you into that. Okay. Yeah. I, actually, now I'm, I'm understanding. A little more clarity, sorry yeah. about that. No, 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 that's all right. I'm out of this. <laughs> we'll figure it out. I know in, in the past, the board has issued uh, those types of licenses to other individuals, but there were no vehicles on the premises. Uh, 
one in particular I know there was a guy who ran an auction business, mm -hmm. you know, and he was given a class of lessons, but there was no no vehicles on site. On site. On site. Yeah, yeah. Just to run the stuff back and forth. It yeah. was just a matter of so you paperwork. have to have this to have the pet plate. Yeah. yeah, and that might be a something similar that we can do too. Right. If it's a vehicle scenario, it's not on site, it's not out front for sale, but yet we can get it for them and still sell it to them per mm -hmm. se. It's just maybe it's there for a few did minutes. We have, do, did we have a restriction on that? Yes, no, I remember. So I, mean, I was involved. No on site? It says no vehicles on site. Yeah. For sale. For sale. Okay. For yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe that, we can put that for us. No, no, no. Yeah, well, I was, I was, I was saying, saying that no, no, no. the select board has issued. Oh, licenses one. in the past to people, uh, and one in particular was for a guy who was in the auction business. Sure. Uh, but it was just for a matter of making it legal to do the paperwork. Oh, but gotcha. The restriction was he could have no vehicles on site for show, demonstration, repair, or anything. Right. And I don't think that's what you would want. No. 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 So no. No, but we it shows that we already um, right. we were able to put conditions on the license, so we'll yeah. just try to straighten it out. Yeah. Well. You didn't put restrictions on the license, you put restrictions on the property, which I think that's the difference. Yeah. You can't yeah. put them on the license, though. You, you think you can? Oh, I know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that you can. Oh, well, there you go. So if, as long as you know that. <coughs> I, I mean, I, I had thought so. So but that was why. The question I thought was whether you want to align it with the CBA decision. Oh, I think you should, yeah. That, well, they didn't mention cars. So why don't we straighten it out okay. and just, and, and if you don't mind, yeah, is fine. this going to be any inconvenience to you to have it? Um, I don't know. We're looking at possibly buying some RVs when we're out in Louisville. So that kind of creates a little pivot. But even so, even if we had the license that allows me to make some purchases, but on the flip side, I wouldn't have a repair plate in, in time. Right. But there's other ways to get stuff transported if that was the case. Okay. That's the only dilemma. But, um, but yeah, if there is that allowance of put two vehicles, that's great. I didn't even think about that, but okay. that's a great idea if that's available. Well, that was Dick, Dick yeah. you know, I'd suggest. I think he was thinking about because we do have vintage cars, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, ourselves. Yeah. And it is a new trend with the vintage trailer, with the car, and we did have um, a company here in town approach us about restoring a vehicle you know, for them to represent what they had back in the 50s here in town. Mm -hmm. Well, that would require me to go purchase a vehicle potentially, or him supplying it, and that would make that difference. And for us, it's probably better for the client. I, I think that's what it. Dick was, um, why, and why he wanted it to just two. Yeah, and that would, that would make sense. So that you had, you know, had one to work on. Right. And whatever. Yeah. Okay, well, um, thank you for coming in. Appreciate and, it, good, um, good question. <laughs> we'll try to sort this out. Um, in the next two weeks. All right, so I'll get a call from <coughs> Andy or? Okay, yeah. okay, okay, very good. All right, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Thank you, much. Thank you. and good luck. Um, the next appearance we have uh, is the Rotary Club of Franklin County for a one day liquor license for their annual festival of trees gala. Thank you. Thank you. Candle. thank you for coming. Thank you for inviting us. Leah Phillips, I'm the president of Franklin County Rotary. I'm the one who submitted the application. Right. And uh, I think you want to know more about it? Um, it, it was pretty it was complete, as far as I know, and you received yep. your money, which is <laughs> the most important part. <laughs> Sounds stupid. We, we have your check. So um, um, if you want to just do a little um, talk about your event for a couple seconds, that would probably make everyone Okay. This is April Healy. She is the committee head for the event, so I'm going to let her speak about it. Great. So um, thank you for inviting us. So this is our second annual event. Um, we choose a beneficiary each year. This year it's Big Brothers and Big Sisters, and it's the oh, nice. Franklin County Sheriff's Department Dog Shelter. Uh, so it's, it's a holiday festival that Yankee Candle has graciously given us their annex um, fitness facility to use, where we fill it with trees sponsored by local businesses, civic or organizations, individuals, families, and we raffle the trees off during the festival. So people just come in and buy tickets, and at the end, everybody oh, wins nice. a tree. Um, so the reason that we're here is because the very beginning of the festival, we have um, a sort of a gala where we do a tree lighting, and we you know keep everything dark, and when all of our tree sponsors are present, we turn on the lights and light up all the trees, and 
we try to make it a, a nice best of event. And so this being our second year, it's gotten a little bit bigger this year. And we had some um, local businesses donate some beer and wine that we would like to be mm -hmm. able to sell at this event, this one day event. So um, the event is going to be on November 30th and it's from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's really nice. It's kind of like a cocktail party. We have yeah. some hors d'oeuvres, and it'll be the people present are the donors um, and sponsors, and then the beneficiaries, representatives from their organization come, members of Rotary, and we do this in conjunction with Kiwanis, the Reef of Kiwanis Club, mm -hmm. and then we're inviting some dignitaries, as we're calling them, some state representatives and mm -hmm. town government officials, and it's kind of so nice. Celebration. Great. Well, that's wonderful. Um, do you want to make a motion? Sure. I move that the select board issue a permit for the Rotary Club of Franklin County for their annual Festival of the Trees Gala at Yankee Candle Village on November 30th, 2017. Second. Is there any further discussion? No. Yeah. No. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank, thank, you, thank you, you very much. much. And thank you for do, doing this. Do we really physically have something in our possession, or is it just um, all we need well, is your vote? We're going to sign it. It's signed. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, we'll sign it. So. Are we supposed to display this or just have it? I think just. I think okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, no, we can use car. They don't have to use If you want to sign over a used car, we can probably raffle that off. <laughs> 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 oh, sure. Yeah. You guys aren't doing anything. <laughs> yes. Feel free to come by. We're not really sending out invites up per se, but um, you know where it is. Across the street, six sure. to ten on the thirtieth. So Great. yeah, right. doors will be open. It'll be a good time. Nice. Yeah. I've been to the one in Springfield. Yes. Yes. That's is what it was. It the same That's Big Brothers Big Sisters. It's, it's yeah. It's the same. Well, it's model. really nice. I mean, uh, Big Sisters and Big Brothers is wonderful. I'm in the dog shelter, we participate in the sheriff's dog shelter. And it's really so beneficial to the town, but also obviously to the animals because they have a safe place to go. So. Especially now with all the, the borders coming from affected areas. We keep telling people who doesn't like kids and puppies. So. Well, <laughs> it's, uh, it's really nice. So I appreciate it very much. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Great. Thank you. Have a great day. Um, next item on the agenda is um, Wendy's report. She's going to make a copy. Great, thank you. Wendy's report. Okay. Um, I've been very busy working on the grant application, which is due tomorrow. Um, yesterday we had a department of meeting, just sort of an update with budget process, mm -hmm. uh, recommendations for personnel board, which you'll talk about later in the agenda. Um, and just kind of what's, what's going on. Um, I also, I contacted him and said, can you give me specificity? And I am planning on being here on December 8th and then being deployed and returning on January 15th, um, which is a holiday, but I'll be here. <laughs> um, and, but I will be fully available, um, or not so fully, but I'll be available and reachable and, um, you know, um, staying in touch. So, so you're coming back on the 15th, you said? I'll be back earlier, but uh, that I'll come in that, I mean, I'm coming oh, back okay. Friday night, so I'll come in on that Monday, which is Martin Luther King's birthday uh, holiday. Well, I'm sure we'll have piles of yeah. It's there already is. <laughs> 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 There's more four. Um, so we will be doing a selectman's meeting on the 13th and the 27th. Yeah. Oh no, that's that's fine. Just just yeah, let me know if you need. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And if you need a ride, yeah. I'll come pick you up. Sounds okay. good. So, um, attending various meetings. Um, most recently, personal board. We'll talk about that later. Uh, planning board wanted me to come to talk about our MVP grant and also what the status is of the planning position. And I am hoping before I go to work something up to present. Um, actually, it'd be nice if I could get that get that done for if, if you're um, meeting on the 29th. Our okay. next meeting. Did you have um, Did Chris Curtis um, write up that invitation letter? I'm not aware. Okay. Could you Could you just give him an email? I mean, I have already reached out 
for people for the January 20th. Well, it's two and a half months. I know, but you've got to say save a date. And, um, and you also need to get people psyched to participate. Which is? This is um, our um, MVP. It's Municipal Vulnerability. Vulnerability. We've been doing the yep. resilient communities work for six years. So yep. we have plenty of work, but we have to find, you know, jump through their hoops. And the whole idea is, um, or my idea, and it, 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 you know, people have to buy into it, obviously. But my idea is that we are going to fix the culvert on um, five and ten, mm -hmm. which is state culvert, right. by Richardson's Candy Kitchen. We're going to clean out that area that's all silted in from the landslide mm -hmm. from Wapping Road. There's problems between Wapping Road and five and ten, right. and then between five and ten and Mill Village. We're going to fix that culvert on Mill Village, and we're going to. We're do, we're do some restoration work on the river. Rough estimate, yeah, rough estimate, $1.3 million. And the reason why I say it's rough estimate because it's my estimate based on years of doing this stuff. So you have to, to do, to get this grant, I mean to get the money, we have to jump through their hoops and we have to build a case. So. Mm -hmm. Um, Deerfield Academy has already been sending me pictures and is probably committed to, I mean, I'm hoping Keith will show up to the meeting. Um, Richardson's Candy Kitchen and Deerfield Country Store, we're going to invite, and all the homeowners along Wapping Road because this is all a public health issue. I mean, they're constantly funding, so their their septic systems are at risk. And um, Franklin Land Trust holds a conservation restriction on that farmland between um, 5 and 10 in Mill Village, so we're going to get them on board and we'll build our story. We'll have all the information that we've been working on for six years, which is the tool that UMass came up with, prioritizes that, that culvert. Um, anyway, you jump through all these hoops and the end result, with Wendy's help, will be one to two million dollars worth of grants. Mm -hmm. Putting a lot on you. Yeah, that's a lot. Don't worry. My, my, most of the work my help done. is to, is to uh, just in what we're immediately in front of us is going through this grant process. Um, and we've picked and a date. We have a resilient communities meeting on the morning of the 24th of January. So we're pairing it. One of the requirements is you got to have the stakeholders meeting, and it has to be like eight hours. So all the people are coming for the resilient communities. We'll have a resilient communities meeting, which we'll be talking about the Deerfield River and the meeting has to be for eight hours. Yes. No, no. They, they expect you to either have two half day or one full day session to do this We're gonna community have engagement process. This week. Mm -hmm. But. It doesn't matter. We're having we're having it's a meeting. Right. We're having a meeting. We already had a meeting planned for that day, so we're 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 putting the meeting on the same day, and then we're having all the stakeholder other stakeholders come after the business meeting of the resilient communities, and the resilient communities. Everyone will be interested anyway because it's the it taught it's the emergency response plan for that doesn't exist for the Deerfield River now that. We have a new owners of the dams, and right. we've already had a breach of a dam, and it has not. You know, I found out about it by going to another meeting and being and shown a picture of it. And this recent? Yes. So mm -hmm. I'll tell you about it offline. All right. Anyway, um, so this is already a scheduled event, so we're hoping that by scheduling this on the same day and we'll meet our requirement for an all-day meeting. Mm -hmm. We'll have all the stakeholders at the same time and everybody will get signed on and everybody will come up with the same priority which is and then we'll be the first in the state to apply for the money so we should get it, right? Oh, well, uh, Sounds good. Sounds really. uh, what, what the outcome is my understanding of this grant is to get an MVP certification, which would bolster us in any list of applicants for these kinds of funds. So I don't think we have a guarantee, but it certainly. If we're the first there. one to get certified, and no one can well, say that we haven't put in, put in the work in, yeah. there, and well, there are a few that are. Where does the money come from? State. It's 
state money, mitigation money that they put aside for the, they have money already like for culvert restoration work, which we don't qualify for because the area next to the, well, like in Mill Village, the area next to it is dead because it's all silted in. And the other side um, is playing fields, so they use chemicals and so there's no, we don't get any credit for habitat priority or any of this stuff. I mean, well, we're, so we're, we're, when so you need a salamander, you can't buy one. <laughs> so, whatever. <You're> buy <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and we've been working on this for a while, and it's it's temp care. Uh, Kevin has come up with this wonderful temporary solution that did work for our culvert um, during the storm, the two yeah. storm events, the one in June and the one just a few couple weeks ago. Um, but Deerfield Academy did experience quite a bit of flooding. The whole fields were underwater. Yeah, and they mess. they had quite a lot of damage, and um, we have to sort this out. So I mean, it is serious. And, and Kevin has gone up on Seamill Road to um, just keep, keep an eye on that land landslide. Uh, I mean, not, it doesn't seem like anything's shifted too much lately, but I mean, we do have to keep an eye on that. Mm -hmm. And um, we're supposed to, Sharon Zemek at the railroad was really good about making sure their crews check the culverts on a regular basis. Well, that thing whips by there 70 miles an hour, they better hope that thing hasn't slid. So anyway, um, I did reach out to the railroad and try to get a commitment that somebody is looking at those culverts on a regular basis. So uh, I never got a call back, and so I have to keep pursuing that. Yeah, it, we don't have the same relationship we did when we had The engineer looks at him every time he goes by and zips it. Yeah, wow. Okay. We gotta make sure what that happens. So anyway, so if we could get that letter, I just to save the date letter. Okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. Thanks. Yes, this whole he has the whole list that we need to send them to. Right. I believe we did it. Yeah, we did that list already. Um, I don't know if you want to mention the little DLTA yeah. downtown. Oh. Yeah, so we're uh, we have a meeting on Saturday morning at nine uh, for a uh, DL. Yeah, actually, we should refer to it. It's the South Deerfield Center, yeah. Center project that we're yeah. just trying to start maybe steps up again to, to move again. things along. And I want to just say thank you, Trevor, for you know getting that going again because it's just it a lot. We've got yeah. Trevor coming in and really want to talk to stakeholders, business owners, how we can help you know develop some economic so development. It, so it's a small group for uh, Jessica Atwood, who we're working with, had um, has conducted some interviews with folks and. Then we're having a small gathering of people, primarily, and others have asked me this, who, who got invited? And frankly, they're either people who have businesses or own property, or others who've actually contacted me saying, you know, who, who do own property and want to see some improvements. So they've been invited. But if anyone is listening, we do have room for additional people who um, could come what, uh, this Saturday, the 13th at 9, I think it's 9 to noon, um, and just really, it's going to be a bit of a presentation, short presentation, about efforts the town has taken in the past, the big uh, Country Streets and Livability Plan, and what that came up with, and some ideas that have been generated through interviews, and then um, hearing from the folks who were there. Yeah. So if you are interested, give me a call at the town offices, extension 105, and uh, let me know. Yeah, okay. I hope to get some refreshments there as well. Um, the other things I remember we were doing my report. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm hoping at the next meeting to to review with you kind of a proposed budget hearing schedule. Um, the, the budgets. Um, anyway. Before so, we just get to that, so um, we were tentatively thinking of a meeting um, next week. Uh, next week, next Monday. I, we're not going to meet at, on the 22nd. For what? What's that? Oh. Um, but I didn't know if if we're not meeting on the 22nd. No. We talked about tentatively. We talked about having a meeting and it was tentative correct. because of That's um, your schedule, Trevor. Mm -hmm. My schedule, budgets, yeah. uh, possible town meeting, all of that. We just wanted to kind of save a date, but I think we decided. 
Twentieth, maybe. Oh, Monday. Yeah, we had. I've got one scheduled for twentieth uh, Monday at six thirty. Good with me. But you talked about all Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and then it kept shifting around. When one time, I, I was okay. Um, it, the reason why it was six thirty is because I have a macro meeting at right. four thirty, but I can just leave a little early because I'm a mm -hmm. good co-chair, so I'll but just I leave early. And I thought you don't want to meet. No, I mean, we can. If I you're really, I, uh, I don't really have much at that, that I'm aware of oh, right okay. now. Oh, okay. Well, that's why I was thinking necessary for you to meet. But if you have items uh, that you think it would be useful to well, me or Trevor, you would like. What 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 on the meeting on the 29th? What do we have so far? I mean, can we spend some time on the budget? Yes, that's yeah. what I would like. Okay. Okay. So we're we're not going to be on the 29th. No, it sounds like okay. they're really. We've been going back and forth, and I just I, and I apologize. I just can't do anything on Wednesday. I have to come. I have, to, I have so. to post it tomorrow. We yeah. have an agenda, so. So, okay. so we'll stick with the 29th. We'll just stick with the 29th. And maybe do maybe a longer meeting just to yeah. kind of focus on the budget. Well, just I have to have too long. much stuff besides, um, you know, the budget. We'll try to focus on the budget. And then if we have more business, we could meet. Maybe we can meet. So we are going to meet on the 29th of November. Yes. Yes. At 6. Okay. Because yeah. it doesn't, and I'm, again, I apologize, but the 22nd is just not going to work for me. Oh. So, um, but it doesn't make sense to meet on the 20th if there's not really fun enough yeah. to go. Well, yeah, the 29th would be fine. I just like to read half the forum. Okay. So now then you're going to go ahead with the budget. Uh, yeah, what's we'll happening focus on the, on the budget. I'm sorry. No, just go ahead with. Um, you started to talk about the budget, and I yeah, interrupted just so because we had not sorted out the dates. Well, that's what we'll have the conversation with. But we should have them back. Um, Brenda Hill, the town accountant, is gone for the next ten days. So. Um, with her on some of that. She'll be accepting those budgets, so uh, she would prefer actually to wait until the 29th to mm -hmm. get the yeah, books together and all of that. Right. So um, it works. Budgets are due by the 22nd, and that's a due date, but we'll see. Um, so I want to organize that so it's a meaningful conversation about a schedule and what we're looking at and any new initiatives that kind of thing. The MMA, is that in January? Okay. That's that weekend coming back. Okay. Uh, it's always President's Day weekend. Which is it? It's the 18th, 19th, and 20th. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, nine, uh, Friday the 19th and the 20th. Okay. And the 21st. Yeah. Okay. Well, you might want to reserve her from there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, you, know, you can wait till, I mean, you can wait till, uh, see how you feel. Yeah, I think, I mean, I you'll think kind I'll of, know, like, that. The, the, the first week of December. Yeah, first week, I'll know. There's still time. Okay. It's not a big deal. You just, you don't want to wait too, too much longer because right. then you have to pay extra. Right. So. Okay. Okay. Um, sorry, Wendy, sorry, go ahead. As I said, a lot of what I yeah it's integrated into the agenda. So. Okay. Um, well, then the next item that I think we really have to sort out is the sewer rates. Yep. Um, Kip, do you want to give us a little background on what's happening, or Wendy? Well, I'll let Wendy start. Uh, um, actually, what I had earlier was for you to, if you wanted to talk about the sewer study committee meeting. Yeah, kind of that. Or, uh, um, as I was going, I, I created a package with my proposal, basically coming from myself and the treasurer uh, for the sewer rate. I've also attached um, uh, Kip's proposal, um, uh, information from Dave Prickett, who met with Kevin and myself and her, um, and we had questions for him, and he's researched them. Or new, you know, he summarized them in his memo, um, and also um, what else is in there? Um, 
the scope of services for a sewer study. I referenced that in my, I sent all this to you by email. I didn't send all of this, actually, I got some of it today, but I sent you some of this by email. Um, the scope of services that was discussed at the sewer study committee meeting is actually brought to by non-voting member Josh Schimmel, um, and it's something I'm gonna look at. He's gonna take another look at, and I don't know what this committee members are also gonna look at, but and I highlighted in there that one of the uh, parts of that would be to um, assist you as sewer commissioners in figuring out, going forward at least, um, how to base, how to um, create a plan for sewer rate um, schedule going forward based on what the capital needs are. Um, the overall purpose of this, the primary purpose of this study would be to really do that, look at what needs to be done. Right. And we still don't have a number well, nailed down for that. So. See, this is, this is well, part explain of... Well, explain it your way then. Yeah, no, no, I would say this is a part of what uh, troubles me is because it seems to always mushroom. And because it becomes so large, nothing gets done. And that um, the focus was to enlist help from other engineers to fix or update the South Deerfield uh, plan. Um, also, to look at both plans and the infrastructure. So, I reached out to three firms. I only heard back from one, and it's a pretty reputable firm, but Josh didn't think that their proposal was clear enough. He wanted more specific things, so he came up with the scope of work, and at our last meeting, we decided that we were gonna, you know, um, sharpen it, uh, any committee member could, you know, give their input to Wendy, as well as Josh, and then we'd create um, an RFP, if you will, to go out and send it to, you know, a half a dozen people and see if we get a, what we get in response. And we might hear just from this one uh, company, Santec, and that way we'd have a better idea of both pictures. One is overall what needs to be done and what needs to be done immediately without losing sight of doing something that we're going to have to change. But one could probably give us some information by the early part of the year. The other one is gonna take a long time. That's to investigate the infrastructure of both plants, you know, what um, rules might be changing and how we implement them going forward. Um, so, isn't that smarter in the long run? It is, it is, it is, but I, I want I really feel it's important to take care of the plant and do some upgrades to it now. That seems to be a big issue. Um, I know that we keep going along, and but it has been, you know, it's been over a year since I started this, and I've come up with some solutions, but it, it just keeps going bigger and bigger and bigger. So, um, you know what? A part of it, I, I feel bad. I missed a lot in that meeting. I meant to come, but I had another meeting. So. I apologize for to revisit this, but okay. you know, one of the things that's confusing to me that I, you know, I, it doesn't matter what the cost is, but I need to feel like I have an idea of what we're going to do, and then you just march to that sure. kind of thing. And I, but I don't have, I mean, I just can't visualize what we're actually trying to do. Yes. And so well, that was why if we go. I mean, if, if there's anything life safety or immediate, I, I have no problem trying to fix. But why invest any money until we get a definitive picture? I mean, you know, the numbers are just so gigantic, 30 million, 40 right. million. Right. But well, I, I think mean, what, how, what we're can't we have somebody, and plus, the, the, really the regulatory sit down atmosphere has changed totally. So You're right. so why wouldn't we want to do the RF take the time if, if nothing is immediate, then why wouldn't we want to take time to get a, a real RFP? There are yeah. there are some things that are immediate. Well, you know, in, in South Deerfield we have a problem with these rags clogging up. Yes. Uh, right. and and it, and it it clogs up, you know, the aerators and the other areas. It it makes it difficult or dangerous for them to clean them the way they do it, and, you know, some of those things. Um, 
that's what the Headworks project would be all about. And that's, if you will, put one thing aside. And the study is going to develop a Headworks project that can work with whatever else needs to get done in the future. But that's only one part of it. Mm -hmm. So so if we did the Headworks now, mm -hmm. that would interfere with long term. Correct. We would not have to redo it in other Correct. Ways. Okay. And, and, that so, would, and that's why... And does everyone agree that, that the headworks is something that we need to do? I think so, yes. Okay. So to the, the other question I have is if we did the headworks, that's still not going to limit our footprint for another clarifier, which I think we need down there eventually. Right. I think, I think that, uh, and I've been doing a little research into acquiring more land around there, mm -hmm. uh, and, but, but I, think, I think that is a, a smarter way of going, is to just see if we can get a little more land. Um, right. and, and to refurbish some of the things, there's been a lot of good conversation about how to refurbish. But the overall thing is, if something happens to a lot of those components, you know, we're kind of in trouble. So, you know, I like the concept of building something new adjacent to it and then refurbishing what we've got so we right. have two of these things. Right. You know, um, so, so if we were talking about the headworks, mm -hmm. what kind of dollar amount? I think, I really believe it will be under the $3 million threshold. Okay. And you, are you comfortable with that? Yeah, I know it needs to be done. I mean, I, yes. I mean, because that's, okay. we've got all that junk going in. Do you have a comment? I, it's a double-edged sword as far as I'm concerned with all the information I've heard. And I understand what could be Jeff, saying. Jeff, why don't you come up to the um, mic? So, because you're on the committee and... Finance Committee and the Capital Committee, so. And you actually came to the meeting. And today. you have been coming to the meeting. <laughs> so, sewer, sewer yeah, yeah, I'm on also. And I don't want to speak for the Sewer Committee. I'm just no. here as a resident. Of so, course. Yep. But with the meetings I've attended, it's kind of like a double-edged sword. And I understand what Kippy's saying. And, uh, you know, I, I agree with him to an extent, but I'm a little hesitant also. Because it depends on what needs to be done with that plan. I would hate to see us spend X amount of dollars on the head work project and then find out that it's not large enough or it's oversized. And I remember Josh, one comment that he made is you, you definitely want the head works project tailor made to the size of the plant you're going to have. Mm -hmm. And the sad part about that is is I don't think that's been determined yet of uh, and that's that's a big question that we're working on and I know that there's uh, definitely some needs at both plants there's no question about it and uh, we'd like to address those as soon as we can but I'd be a little cautious because as uh, through the conversation was if if you do the headworks project and it's not sized appropriately then it could become inefficient and actually cost you more money. Or if you find out it's too small and then to go back and try to redo, you know, it's like throwing good money after bad. So, and I don't want to discourage anybody because Kippy's right on, you know, there's some things that, geez, you'd like to be able to address it as soon as possible, but I would hate to rush into it. And I realize we've been at this for a long time. I think mm -hmm. everybody's getting a little frustrated with it and uh, would would like to be able to bring a solution forward. But I think after our last meeting, I, I felt, and I think the way I read other members, and I can't speak for them, mm -hmm. but I really do think that people felt really comfortable with the focus that we finally have reached here. And... Uh, you know, coming up with the scope of work mm -hmm. and fine tuning that and getting that out as soon as possible because uh, if there was a uh, comment made that they thought that we'd get some response within a matter of about three months and we'd have, a, have, have some serious consideration there and somebody would be able to do, or a few people would be able to do a pretty good study on it in that time period. And, and do you think um, in that time period we would have some, with these kind of researches, and if you can answer this too, we would have an idea of kind of size of headworks 
you know, kind of gear that That's, in. Like, that was the impression that then, I that I received. Well, that we'd have we'd have more we'd have more information to make a a, a better educated guess. Show right, me. Right. It's still going to be a guess. Yeah, right. You finally get it done. But, but, I think what, what causes some of this, um, what Jeff speaks to, is the white elephant in the room is. Are we going to close down Old Deerfield and mm -hmm. ship everything to South Deerfield? That's the big, the big part. Of it. Sure. And everything that I've seen and learned and stuff like that, I'm not saying that can't happen. I just find it extreme, extremely unlikely because of the cost. And even though it is going to cost a lot of money to do the two plant, you know, plants, I still think that's going to be the best way of moving forward. You know, but that's my opinion. Right. Um, no. And, and what Jeff was speaking about, you know, making it too big, too small, and stuff like that. I think that even though that is correct, we're, the development uh, probability in South Deerfield is pretty limited. There's right. not a lot of land to develop around here. So you, we're not going to see, you know, a, giant a, a, a big time. spike, you know. So if we currently have a permit for just under a million gallons, and we were to build a headworks project that was for one and a half million, maybe two. I and, and right. uh, these numbers, we, you know, then we'd be kind of in the ballpark, if you will. Okay. Yeah, but all this time it, it, it takes time. So if we say, I mean, because this gives me an idea of what we should be doing, a headworks project. Okay. okay. So we know it's going to be around three million dollar wise, roughly. So what you do is you start marching towards that. Well, because you have to, you have to have go through the capital committee, you have to go through the finance committee, you have to figure yeah, out. But I don't think we're quite there yet because that's why these getting bids from these firms and hiring a firm to go in and look at this, then they can come back and make the recommendation. Should the Headworks project be one million? Should it be one point three million? You know, and here is the cost of you know closing. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, it, it, it sort of gives you a, a foot footprint to, to move forward with because before we were talking about overhauling everything right. at once yeah, and, and, and it was way overbuilt. Yes. I, I really believe from what I heard, from what I understand and from you know the year plus that we've all put into this thing, I really believe that within that two or three month period after that scope of work went out that uh, that would take a lot, a lot of guesswork off of the plate with the response you get, and I think it would be better defined for everybody. And I think, as far as progress, I think that you would be able to move forward fairly quickly once you once you got the feedback from that scope of work that was sent out. That's my own personal feeling, and I think it could be done. I realize that the South Deerfield plant. Uh, you know, there's some immediate needs they're struggling with. We're trying to do little things here and there to help out. You know, the Captain Lathrop uh, situation needed to be addressed, and it is being addressed. Yeah. So hopefully we'll be able to move forward with that and take that off our plate so that becomes a non-issue. So I would, I would just ask if we could give it a little more time to let this scope of work work through the process for the next three, four months. If this ends up being a total bust, then I say, you know, all right, yeah, let's go. Cool. We got to move forward with this. Right. No matter what, we've got to make a decision. And here it is. Yeah. But I really feel that scope of work and whoever responds to us will give us a lot of insight, and we can make a better, better choice at that point. I really believe that. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Because Thank I, you. I feel uh, this was a good discussion. Have you heard from? Um, is it, did, did Kevin hear that? I think mean, he was sizing pumps to anybody get the answer from where to get on that? Um, he was expecting that this week, but he's been away. He's returning tomorrow, so okay. we'll know tomorrow from okay. him. All right. Um, I'm just curious to get there. Yeah. He, that's yeah, what he, he presented to the sewer study committee. Right. right there. Yeah, I back, was there. He yeah. was there. Back in, and it was uh, in late July, uh, we contacted uh, Springfield Water and Sewer. And we spoke with the people that run it there. Kevin and I took a trip down. We saw an injection pump, like what we needed, but it was bigger than what we needed. We we talked a lot about it. They arranged. They came up. 
uh, we were giving, given an estimate of what it would be uh, to clean up all the electrical problems that Kevin had, and I thought we were all set. Nothing happened. I asked Kevin three or four times. I says, go forward. Just go ahead and do it. And he said, well, he wanted to talk with Dave Prickett about it. And I don't know. I kept asking them to do it, and it, he kept saying he wanted to talk to this guy. And now we're here in December, and I think at the sewer study meeting last time, he said, I, he can't wait anymore. He's had too many failures. It's cost him. He's going to just go ahead and do it. And I wish he would have done it once ago. But I think that's, I, I, and I can't speak for him, but I think that's what he's going to do now. He's going to go forward and have that injector pump put in there. And there was some talk about he didn't understand, he didn't know about the conditions of the slide right. in the yeah, bottom, but, you know, that. And he was wondering about the size of the motor at the sewer station. I was just curious if he had served. I, I, don't, I don't, I don't. As soon as, uh, if, if he gets something from Dave, I will get that out to you. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I, and I don't. And the committee, well, does it need to go to the committee or just Well, well yeah. it could be I mean, I, I just don't get it because, I mean, we, we witnessed these things uh, and we got, an assurance from this contractor. He had just done one in Hatfield, and he has been, I think they said 13 down in the Agawam Sprinkler, and he said they, they work like a charm. And the guy who maintains them, I mean, he says he does what Kevin does. He says, yeah, they're great. We don't have any of these issues. So I don't understand what the delay was, but it's okay. I, I thought he was uncertain. Correct me if you heard it differently, and you were there as well, Jeff. Um, and I heard it first at the meeting. We hadn't discussed it with me ahead of time. But it sounded like he had questions about the original installation of, and, I think you so. know, and that was, he was stepping back because of that and was concerned. Correct me if that's when not how it down the pipes to yeah. the bottom. Or so I don't, something. you know, I remember that, but just in a generic sense that it was more, rather than put, install something on top of something when he had questions about the basic technology there or the installation that was originally put in that that was how I heard what he well, said I, and, and I heard that too and look here again I, I was there through the thing and I mean we had the, the, the manufacturer's representative uh, we had the, uh, the contractor and we had this other person uh, who runs a much 20 times larger than what we have and he says he's been using them and they they work great so I just right. I'm trying to remember whether Josh Schimmel commented on this. I don't think he did. I think he said he might as well just get to see what Dave says. I think that was his comment. Okay. I mean, since we're here now. <laughs> oh, well. Really, yeah. I, I anyway. agree. We need yeah. to move that move. forward. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So, the race. so yeah. it brings us to the race. Uh, what I propose. It's in there. Okay. What I propose is to change the rate from nine dollars to ten dollars, mm -hmm. but to lower the minimum usage bill from a hundred to eighty dollars. There was less than three percent of the households that were minimum users, and we did hear from some of the people that were concerned because they only use three or four thousand gallons, and so if you kind of prorate it like that way, they're instead of paying nine dollars, they're paying twelve, thirteen, and fourteen dollars per thousand, and it was difficult for them to afford that. So if you change the minimum bill to $80, that's only for three or four percent of the, the households. Um, and if by raising the rate from nine to ten dollars, it's going to raise the average bill forty dollars. Uh, so that's I don't think that you know our our, think our property taxes go up a lot more than that anyways, mm -hmm. and we pay taxes. Most people pay taxes for a lot of things that they don't ever use, right. you know. And this is something that the ratepayers use every single day, um, and I just feel that it's a very prudent way of um, paying for this instead of just keeping not putting money aside, not putting money aside, then you're going to be borrowing three million dollars. Not only is it going to cost you that three million dollars, you're going to be paying interest on that money too. Right. You know, it's, it's like putting things on credit cards instead of paying for it. Speaking of which, when you, uh, so, when do, when do we want to have the discussion on the, the enterprise fund? Well, um, I've been talking about it with Brenda. I think we want to do it. I just have a question to work out about um, the flexibility of way we have it now with reserves versus retained earnings and right. so we're, we're we're having that conversation because one of the things is if, if if we're trying to put money aside 
right now the interest, because it's not an enterprise fund, the interest goes to the general fund. Right. And that's not fair. Right. Even though it's, I mean, it's a small amount of money. Right. You know, but in long, still, in the long run, if this is the game plan, is to put, start putting money aside, which I, I totally agree with, I'm yeah. not saying. But we, we should actually vote this as an enterprise fund so that all the money, including the interest, is, is stays with the sewer reserve, or you know, in the enterprise mm -hmm. fund retain as retain your earnings, mm -hmm. and that we don't have any issues with it. But there, there's a lot of things we do. I mean, the, the, and, and I agree 100% that it should go there. But the interest you're talking about is five or six hundred dollars. I know. And, and, and I, I get. I and there's other ways that the town can help that. I mean, just by the town hall paying their fair share is going to more than make up for that. You know. Chip, so. I'm not saying that. But I mean, if we're you know, if we're, if we're setting the rate to to build up some retained earnings or to no, funds. you're right. And and I, and I do and think it's I a good just, idea. I just I just want to point out that that interest it's not a big dollar. No, I know it isn't at this point because. Um, we have been using, we've been using our reserves yep. to pay for yeah. repairs and yeah. to operate. So yeah. it's it definitely and the interest rates are so low, obviously that it's not anything. But well, the other thing that I propose is that. But if we're again, this is part of reforming this and moving forward altogether. Okay. The other thing I proposed was a different rate, um, slightly higher for commercial and for the schools, and. Wendy doesn't think that we can actually have a school or institutional rate right, that it would have to be under the heading of the commercial. Yeah, that's in the research I've done in the conversation with Dave and his research or his knowledge and experience. Um, it's traditionally not done with public institutions that you set an institutional rate. So that would, you know, that was what you were proposing right. for, the, well, for the high school. Well, um, it, it wasn't just the high school, right. it was all any school, right. whether private or public. Um, but that, you have to be able to back into yeah, it. Yeah, it has to be justifiable so, um, and fair and equitable. But what we can do is vote um, the $10 rate for this year and work on um, uh, setting it up for next year. Well, like, one of the com conversations I had with Brenda is that she said, well, the software makes it too difficult. She can't Barbara. do this. Barbara, I'm sorry. That's OK. Um, <laughs> but I talked with the people today, and. Um, this is girl Maddie and I told her what we want to do. She said, oh, that's no problem. It, it won't take, it, it's a matter of a, a, a 30 minute thing. You know, she said, well, if you call me tomorrow, I can't do it for tomorrow. But she said, if I have some notice, we can do it. Uh, there's no cost involved to it, you know, and it's just a matter of identifying there, you have to market. You go figure out how to code it and stuff like that. But um, the, um, the there's a lot of work that has to be done on this end. I'm trying to speak for, for Barbara and her office, and sure. the collections office. But they're, you know, we can't, we have to do this now. We have to set the rate. We have to, you know, uh, get the money in. The, I, I get the it, budget. but. And there's a lot of work that they have to do on their end in terms of coding and figuring out who's in what category and all of that. And she's kind of, you know, she's consistently expressed that that's a challenge to do in any kind of short order. And well, I, she's and, out and today. We've been I don't. I don't know exactly what she has to do, but I'm thinking there's 880 users. I mean, we could pay Priscilla one weekend and she could create 880 bills. It's not. I don't. I, I as mean, you it's, said, it's, as you, you, look said up, you look up. You don't know what she has before. to do. No, I know. I, so we have to trust her, her telling us that she can well, do this. Well, we can do this. I, it's, it's, here, right? it's not, we're not opposed to this, by the way. We think it's a good idea. It's just to implement it can't be done this quickly. I don't understand. We didn't I, know I mean, about it's this. It's frustrating to me that I know. everything in town has to wait years to get done. This is not something that's that difficult. You call the people up, you tell them what you want to do, and it's done. I, I don't know her I know, protocol, I know. but I, I, I do trust her and, her, her judgment and, and, and she's telling us. And we talk a lot about fairness in that you know the, the people who pay sewer bills in our community really subsidize the schools a lot and that's just not fair you know frontier for example i mean they have a, a huge kitchen i don't know where they make six seven hundred meals every single day and all this stuff and you know if you break down they're not even paying what the poor elderly couple on elm circle where Case. It's just not fair. I mean, 
Uh, all we have to do is make the adjustment and send the appropriate bills out. Well, I'm recommending that you do. We, I thought this was already in effect. I didn't know until recently. We had we hadn't built uh, the public bill, our buildings and the school. Well, we're doing it this year. I'm recommending. Remember last year we gave them plenty of warning last year. Mm -hmm. This is what we're going to do. Yeah, it's a and, proposal. I mean, especially Frontier. I mean, they should pay pay their fair share, and that costs. Even though Deerfield pays the 50 percent of it, I don't know, Trevor. Mm -hmm. But it, but I understand, and that's fair. But there are other communities that need to pay in for it too, you know. And just like I've, I've said all along, you know, this is my town hall, and you know I get to use these, and, and part of the operation of this town hall, all taxpayers should pay for it, just not the sewer users. But that hasn't been the case. It's just not fair. You know? Well, unfortunately, I you know. I'm not, I'm got, I mean, I wanted to do this for a couple of years now, so. Good, um, that's a good idea. Uh, but Barbara is saying that we need to send out the sewer bills and she cannot do it, so. So um, why don't we plan to just, uh, so well, she's out for 10 days. days. This year. No, no, Brenda is out. Oh, Barbara's just out yeah. today, but she'll be in tomorrow night. So. Well, why don't we, can we just hold off on this and I'll talk with her tomorrow? Well, I, actually, I don't think we can. We've got to get this out, right? She's going to get the bills out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, last week we, we had time to do it. I mean, last week we had time to do it. Now we don't. Have, now it has to get done. I haven't seen this until just recently. I've been asking you for quite some time right. to get this to me. Yeah. We so had I this have not. I have not seen it. We had this at the last. Week. That's not enough time to, to do all the work that she needs to do and wrap our, you know, our heads around what we have to do here. And you have brought it up, and I, I just, I asked you to send it yeah. to me. So I've been working feverishly to try to understand it and repackage everything that you get so it's understandable not only to you, but the public who comes to the meeting as the rationale. We need a rationale. A rationale. We need a rationale. We don't have a final number of what, the, what our capital needs are. We need to get there and get there as soon as possible. We know we need money, but we don't know how much money we need. And if we come up with a plan, and I think yeah. Mr. Ogden was speaking to that. Not that it's a bad idea, it's a good idea. It's just that we don't, we don't have a plan. We can talk, you know, but we don't have a plan. By plan, you mean because we don't have a plan what we're going to do with the sewer? We don't have a plan that will tell us what we need to raise and raise and get take in or borrow money to support the capital. Uh, we know we basically know operations, but we don't have a capital plan, and that's where we'll, you know, we can start working on a plan over a five-year period, whatever. But, but don't we, we do know that we have to do repairs, and we do know that it's going to be several million dollars or more. So this is going to about how much that is. We really have to document it and just the one, the one thing that, um, so that then we if we do it that way, we should do that soon. Right. We should, we but if we do it that way, what happens is next summer, if we do have bids, we don't have the money. This way, we'll have more money. We, um, so well, then we actually, end up going to borrow the money, then we pay interest on the money. Yeah. You know, How much more money will we have if we do that? Thirty-seven thousand dollars. For what? Right. That's how much more we'll have if we do get split. Thirty-seven thousand. Isn't that big crickets? No. No. Well, no. We need this. That has nothing to do with. This was a little we, different than what last, I proposed. Um, last but, year, when last year when we did this, I figured that that rate, the way we changed it, we would generate four hundred to four hundred and thirty thousand dollars, and we generated four hundred and forty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. This way of doing this way will generate another six hundred thousand dollars, but. The, the big deal is who pays for it, mm -hmm. and it doesn't. The burden, the largest burden, does not come from the residential rate users. Well, one thing that I can see that um, that we didn't adjust is we have um, minimum charge of 100, and your your suggestion was go down going to 80. 80. Because so it would it would, it would only save well it, it would only save. Uh, only less than three percent of the people would take it. Could take it. Would take advantage of that. Most of the people use more water, so their their usage is going to be much more. No, we're not this year. Last year, I spent a lot of time. I broke it all down. They gave me a. So did you see the minimum uses? Were they 
Were they truly here in the village? Oh yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh yes. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure. Yes. Yeah. There are other houses. We want to no, I know. I know. It's okay. it's. Well, I, I just have a concern about going up and down and across. You know, you well, need to have a plan. There's a. We shouldn't do a one year plan. We really well, that's 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 I think we actually have to and we do don't have enough information to justify. Yeah, but if we if we do the ten dollar more than Wendy, if we do the ten dollar raise, and we work really hard to come up with this for the next time, and we will have the information on the headboards, don't you think that would be enough information? Yes, yes. Do but, but that's um, that's what I'm saying. I, I I'm concerned about if you go up last year on that uh, sewer fee. And then bring it. To, is that the one you're talking mm -hmm. about reducing? Mm -hmm. And then reduce it now. And then you know. Well, yeah, well I think I have to go back. I mean, but it, it's like there's nothing wrong with saying what we did was okay, but we can tweak it to you know make it more accommodating to people who can't afford it. Well, and, and that's, that's what, why I don't have a problem. That's why you know going and, and I understand what you're saying. It is a plan, but so we we went with a minimum of a hundred dollars, and it worked. And we did hear from some residents that had a hard time with it. So by lowering it, you know, I think 35 or 40 people are going to benefit. They're going to save $20. What the, you know, it's not a lot of money. To them it is. And then the, the, the average, the majority of the people, you know, 80% of them, their bill's only going up $40. Now, there are other people that's going to go up a lot more, but they use a lot more water. And it seems to be a very fair and equitable way, like I said. You know, our property taxes are going to. Uh, okay, well. But Barbara is saying that she can't do the split rate. Right. And, and we, we have year. to have documentation for the split rate. So can we stick with trying to do the ten dollar rate across the board? I want to look. I want to look more into why this can't happen because, like I said, I I talked with Barbara and she seemed frustrated and I and I said to and I I said this. She told me that she talked with the people and they haven't gotten back to her yet. But it was going to take weeks and could cost thousands of dollars. I called the woman, I talked to her for five minutes, not a big deal, I can, you know, just let me know, give me a couple of days notice, we can change the rate she looked was at. This, was this our true account person or just a salesperson? It was the, the account person for okay. Smart, what is it called? Smart rates? I forget what it was. And soft rate. Soft rate. She said, she's looking through it and she says, she says, wow, she says, you have the simplest one here. She says, I don't know how many, all you have is just one sewer thing. And she says, there's multiple towns that have multiple rates, multiple tiers that as the gallonage goes up, the rate goes up. Does she you know? know what package we have? That Whatever she said, it was, it was, it was bare bones, real simple. I, I, she knows what she might have said, she might have said, but I, I'm not a computer. No, person. was the person you spoke with familiar with what were you because they package things, you know, yep. just like health plans. Yeah, you know? she she looked up she she looked right on what we have and what we So do we have to change our package? No, you don't all you have to do I don't is know. I, I I really do need Barbara in on this. Yeah, I mean I, that's what I plan to talk to Barbara tomorrow about it. And I can say to her, I said, look at you know, I talked with Maddie about it. Well, and do you want to I don't know. Wait. How soon does she need to I mean can uh, it's can, can We're we behind meet? schedule on getting the bills out, so we need to do this. I know what she's going to, I mean, we've well, had multiple I, I conversations. Talked Brent, I talked you to talk Barbara about, about it uh, when I got your thing. I stopped in because I saw sure. back and forth. And she said, this is all fine and good, but it doesn't, it, it can't be all dumped on me this year. Can I just have a year to change it um, and go through that? And if we want to change to 80 to help, uh, you know, the or needy out and the, um, and do it do the ten dollar rate and then just make the change next year. Does it have to be this year? Is it, is well, it, it doesn't have to be. I'm just I'm just I'm thinking of balancing out, making the people mm -hmm. who, who use it pay their fair share, and not yeah, not the average no, no, rate no, user. But well, well, I mean, honestly, these look a bit arbitrary. And can we actually back into it and come up, use the ten dollar rate as our residential bond rate? Right. But what about the year, or about the commercial or in the school rate? Well, what I'm so saying is if we you need don't, to back into it and we need to have more analysis as to what 
really what they're costing because it's it's no different than a split tax rate. Okay. You you need to be able to justify why you're doing this. And I'm not and I'm not saying this is not justification, but these numbers are just fifty fifty cents. They are. They, they, they are. So right. what I'm saying is have we really had analysis of the numbers to show what the real true cost is? Or is that just I mean this is no more this is fairly arbitrary in my mind. So how do you justify it's, a split bill? What makes it arbitrary is that you can say, I just picked a dollar or more. But when you sit down and you take how many gallons that the school uses and what they pay and what the you know, uh, homework pays. And that's what pays, I'm saying. Is it, this, but this is really covered. Is this only a dollar or more? No, it, it doesn't cover. It well, doesn't cover. But if you, if, if, if you raise it. this to $14, they'll go crazy in the first year. So I'm saying if we raise it a little bit every year, it, what's the, what's no, I, I think I think it's better off to is say we've done we've done the analysis and the true cost is fourteen dollars a gallon or whatever or for, you know whatever ten thousand for ten thousand and and, and uh, I mean per thousand gallon and, and 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 have real figures to this. I mean I I don't mind arguing and saying this is what you. What you truly cost us. I, 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 I don't, support that too. I don't, I, I don't want to. I don't want to go because when you say it, you just arbitrarily pick a number. You no, say it's it just cost. arbitrary. I mean, I, I picked it because of the cost involved. But how many times have we heard from people? You know, I wish. I wish. Ten years ago, the rates would have gone up a little bit, a little bit. I hated getting hit with, you know, my rate going up two hundred dollars. But we're not but talking we, about residential. We, we're talking about commercial and, and institutional. And, 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 and so I would rather go with to them with the real. What do they really cost us? Because like Oxford Pickle, Oxford Pickle kind of businesses are not here. So. No, but if you talk with Kevin, most of the time when he has grease clogs. Right around the restaurants, well, and then, that costs us a lot of money. If somebody cooks a, a chicken and they throw all the fat in it, it's not going to clog up the sewer. But if you've got fryer layers and stuff going down there, then, but then Kip, what I would like to do is to take Kevin's real cost and then have this have have that be part of the commercial plus, industrial plus cost. the management area. We can talk about that again. Well, yeah, I mean, I would I would rather I have no problem. Going. Advocating and going toe to toe with someone really costs us money. That's the bill. The bills are not being, um, you know, we haven't set different rates for. I thought no, that was what but, we wanted to do. No, it was just all the management districts were to keep track of yes, how much right. money goes. It's just on paper, right. you know. So if we get five hundred thousand dollars from Old Deerfield, here that's in management too. Right. If we get four hundred thousand from South Deerfield, that's in management one. But that's that's all was paper, so we could track. Right. What the plans were, and and Kevin has told me that they're Kevin and Keith have been separating their stuff, and they have been since the spring. Right. But it, it wasn't the goal also to look, possibly look at different rates for two different for the different management. I thought that's what I heard. Okay. No, not not necessarily. It was to to find out what the cost, true cost of operating each of the plants. I don't know. So, but we did if, look into that. The council said we could actually have exactly. separate rates. So if we find, I have, I, have no problem, cost I have no problem going to people and saying, look, you cost us more money. Mm -hmm. Honestly, what, what, what I'm saying is, it, it's kind of switched a little bit to measurements. If we find out that old Deerfield. And, and I, these are not exact numbers. Say Old Deerfield costs us two hundred thousand dollars to operate, and South Deerfield costs us three hundred thousand dollars to operate. But yet Old Deerfield only pays for thirty percent of all the bills, and South Deerfield pays for seventy percent of it. Who's paying for what? You know, that's what I'm saying. And, and Kip, I don't have a problem with that. But I'm, what I'm saying is, you have to base it on real stuff. So that you don't keep adjusting it after the fact when you have no information. I, I, I want us to have, a, I think it's smart to increase the rate. I also think it's smart to lower the minimum usage because mm -hmm. uh, it, we have, um, uh, there are people that this makes a difference. And um, then I think we build our case for the real true cost. We, we are starting to do that, but I, I, don't, I don't feel comfortable. Do you, do you think the true cost is ever going to go down? No, but okay, I don't Okay, so but that's the point. Yeah. Why, why, wait, why wait and make 
single family homes subsidize schools. Because that's what they're, yes, oh yes they are. We, we already are putting money in the bank and that we adjust the rate for the next. I, I get year. it, Carol, but it, they're not paying the fair share. I, I disagree that we don't have enough information on that. Okay. <clears throat> well, I, I guess there's no sense in beating this around. I mean, you know. You, I, I, I think we need to, we have to document the true cost and then we need base rate. And on how are you going to get that true cost? Because of the figures that you are doing. <laughs> Wait a minute, though. I told you I did the figures and you don't want to believe me. This study should give us that. The, that is what we need. Have you, have you ever read Keith, Keith and Keith and Kevin are separating the expenses, right? Did you read these then, things? These, I read, she gave me one from Northampton, a sewer rate study. And they're, they're all the same. I mean, I guess you really need to go to college for a long time to write four pages to tell you that you know the sky is blue because that's all they do. The bottom line is you need a million dollars and you have so many people and you have to divide that million dollars by the number of people and that's how you get what it needs the cost. What we don't know is what the cost to, to make the improvements are. So by raising the rates a little bit you know we're putting money aside that we're going to be using in the real near future not 10 15 20 years on road maybe next year and I've, I've heard from a lot of people who want to put a little money away instead of all of a sudden have to go for a, an override because we got to borrow you know three million dollars to fix the sewer pump and a 40 to, on an average a 40 dollar increase is not a lot and no I, I agree and that's why I'm supporting the 10 dollar rate okay uh, no, I agree with you. Okay. But I also feel that we, if we're going to do, if we're going to charge these diff differential rates, mm -hmm. we have to have the information. And we just, whatever it is, is what it is. But we do. No, we don't have enough information. There's not, this, these, arbor, these are arbitrary. You just They're less the rate by 50%. 50 cents. That's less than what it's going to be, but we know how much it costs if yeah. just by the book. Then, then, then give it to the true rate. Not 50 cents, but well, the true we don't rate. know the true rate be on the improvements because we don't know what the improvements you are going to be. What the true cost. You just said that you know the true rate yes. for commercial and institutional sure. rate. Well, let's charge them the real rate then. We, we are. But we have to we have to charge more for the improvements. We're, I'm not talking a lot. I'm talking fifty cents. It's, yeah, but I don't understand. We should if if they're costing us more to operate, then we need to cost. We need to increase the rate plus the increase. You're increasing for residential one dollar. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't we increase the commercial and the institutional rates? The one dollar plus the real cost, because you keep saying there's a real cost. But the, the, saying, part, the part that I'm you saying, don't know is what it's going to cost for the improvements. But they are, you are saying that they are costing us already. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm saying don't do this 50 cents. I'm against that because we're, it's an arbitrary amount. Okay. Do what the real cost is. So give okay. me the information, okay. and whatever the real rate is, is what will go. You're going to have to ask Kevin, how many hours did you do this? How much money did you spend renting that back truck? How many? That's how you're going to get down to the nitty gritty to the exact cost. You don't know the exact cost of anything that this town buys. You get a but ballpark then, figure. But then, Kip, then we don't have the information to, to charge the right rate. Uh, right. What I'm saying is you charge, you charge, you're charging the homeowners a dollar increase. Don't but, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? I don't but really that's care. Only 50 you, cents more, that's arguing I mean, about stupid stuff. If you don't want to raise, you know, I go back, I go back, charge them six dollars. They'll all be happy. Then when they have to borrow ten million dollars, fight for that. No, but I'm not. I'm saying not the fifty cents, which is arbitrary. Do the real cost, because you're saying that there is a real cost that they're not. There is an increased cost to the commercial, and it's not that much. And fifty cents is not a lot of money. So you're saying, what you're saying is that in, in reality, they, they really don't cost us that much more. Because you're saying the 50 cents is more than enough to cover. 
it is for now. I'm not saying it's enough to cover it. It's an increase that it sh but see the 50 shares cents. the burden. It, it, it increases their payment because of their their payment burden is increased because of the demand that they put on the services to utilize the sewer. And the big thing is kitchens with the grease. Now there's a lot of commercial uh, people who just have you know a bathroom or something like that. They don't have kitchens. Their water bill is probably three or four thousand uh, gallons. So this is going to cost that person who has a, a little business, uh, an accountant shop, something. It's going to cost them fifty cents for the entire year. That's going to be his increase. I don't get it. What's the big deal? It's the it's the big users that use a lot of it to have you know multiple you know back. But what I'm saying is, kids, that you're not. It isn't the big deal. The fifty cent guy. Mm -hmm. It's we, we're not getting. We're not charging the correct amount to the big users. Okay. That's that's what I'm saying. Is that that's just. That's not really addressing it. Well, you can spend thirty thousand dollars and get another report like this, and it, it, it just goes around and around and around. And no, it, it all, they all say the same thing. This is how much money you need. I think we can do it ourselves. Because you exactly. Started, yeah, but you exactly. Started, but you started it, but you haven't finished it yet. We need we need the actual year's information. So that that's we, that's Carolyn. It's your way of trying to manipulate this because you don't want to do this. You don't want to put the burden on Brent or Barbara. I don't know what the burden is to her, and, and if it's un, unforeseeable and she can't do it, that's fine. It's not the information that I got. She no, told me I, that these people, I, I want to it took them right weeks. I, I do. I, I, it's just that this 50 cents from what you were just describing <laughs> isn't going to be enough. So why are we it even isn't. bothering with 50 cents? Why don't we do a couple bucks? You, are, do, do you, don't you think you'd get a bigger argument from people who, if you ask them for a two dollar increase rather than a fifty cent increase? Am I really worried that Deerfield Academy is going to hear come well, here and complain just, not for Academy. a two dollars a, a thousand gallons? But it's no. not just Deerfield Academy. It, it's, it's all of them. It, it might be Frontier. You know, I, I just, I don't know. No, actually not. If we can justify it, which is what you're saying is justifiable, right? We don't, I, I can't give you an exact figure. I know it's it's going to be more than this, and I, I can't I can't tell you how much it's going to be because we don't know. The well, then why going. don't we go with the ten dollars because Barbara can do it, okay. and we can do it tonight, okay. and then we adjust this to the true cost. Okay, this is what my problem is. I don't want to just do an arbitrary fifty cents. I want to do the true cost. If it's two or three dollars, I have no problem arguing with somebody, and I'll take the green. But we have, we have to be able to document it. Carolyn, going up the valley, the residential, this, we are charging people more than it costs to operate the system. Do you understand it? Before the main last year, before, last year we, we charged the users $440,000 more right. than it costs to run the plant. That, that and the reason we did that is because we know that we have to spend millions of dollars to do this. Mm -hmm. So by increasing this fee, it is a small increase, but it's going to be more money that we have. And I have no problem. I agree. So why is it such a big deal that you need to know the exact cost of what it's going to be for the schools and blame saying that a dollar increase is just arbitrary? Because a dollar isn't enough from what you're saying. It isn't, but I don't know exactly how much it is. And what I'm saying is, let's charge more. Pick right? a number then. I can't. Well, I, the I only don't wanna, thing I wanted to know is, I don't pick a number is that I Barbara wanna. pushed back on this heavily and said, not yet, just give, I need some time to do it. So I just wanted to know how much time she needs. If we oh. can do it in a week, like you said, great. I'm getting a head shake. From the town that that no, can't. And, and, and I get that because when I spoke with her, I said, "Listen, I, I do not want to cause any course, problems in here. Enough. I don't want you got enough work to do." I said, "This is what I'd like to see done. Can you can you do it? Can we can we and vote this tonight? If so Barbara has something to go ahead with, if 
but not not to go ahead with it until we definitively find out that we she can't do this. So well, I feel like we have. Okay. So we can't. Not. Who did you speak to for that? Barbara. Okay. So I talked to Barbara too. She said, "This is what she told me." She said she called her, the people at Soccer. At Soccer. Yeah. Keep this up. They said it was going to take weeks to do and thousands of dollars. And I said, we're just manipulating a, a two numbers on a computer th program. I find that difficult to do. So that, I call. My, but is that, uh, how do you know which account is that? That, that was the other piece of it. Is it's the, the code. Score. It's, it's, it's the, the code. code. From it, it, and yeah. determining who's what. Right. right. So who makes that decision and how do you decision. define commercial? Right. I, I really and, feel like we need to take institutional off the table. It's, it's, that is kind of arbitrary. And it's not, it's not done. Why not just charge? Commercial for the institution. Oh, if you want to call the school's yeah. commercial, that's yeah. fine. I, I, don't, I don't care. I, okay. I have no problem with what you call it. Okay. So that's what, that is what's recommended. That's like we just need a little more work to get it all hammered up. Right. But I, I guess I have the problem is, is too many times I find in our government mm -hmm. that people tell me some things and then I find out the total opposite. And I'm like, what? And you can't blame me. If somebody tells you, Carolyn, you know, you cannot put a blanket on your horse in the wintertime because he'd get pneumonia. And you call the vet and say, I never heard of anything like that. What are you saying? And well, this is I agree. A, this is but part of it, well, part I of it I I'll just have to say, part of it could be because you're not asking the complete question and, and, and not really well, sure of what happens on her end because you have, you have to load in all the... You have to sure by by just going to commercial, industrial, and institutional instead of the three rates, you go down to two rates. Right there, <coughs> sure. eliminated a hassle and a half because you're either either residential or with something else. But I think I, when she looked at it, she was saying, "Okay, how do I determine who is institutional, who right. is commercial, residential, uh, institute, um, industrial, and residential?" But then on the other hand. I mean, I look, if we're going to charge a split rate, this is a new thing for us, a split rate. I want justification for that split rate, and I want the people that are, we're splitting off to be paying the true cost. Well, last year when I went... When and, I, I, and I don't think a dollar is going to do it. It might not be enough, and I'll agree with that. Last year I went, and I wanted, when I started trying to figure out who pays how much for sewer, mm -hmm. I wanted to know, you know, how much this was, and how much that, and the basic thing is like, I, you know, there's 880 people, there's no way I'm gonna be able to do this. And Sarah says, well, I can give you a spreadsheet, just break it out by zip code, bingo, there you go. Everybody in Old Deerfield has a different zip code than South Deerfield, and I had my answer, just that simple. And, and so that's, it sounds like maybe it's not as difficult as uh, friend uh, Barbara thinks, and it might be more difficult well, than you think. And so I think we can come. Well, to that's why I wanted to talk with her because it, you know there is the part about the identification of who's what in, in, in a, a coding, if you will, so a software to recognize that. So I did ask the question. So, well, what do you do? And they said every, every bill they have to come out and they have to enter in the gallons, and then the software does this. So if they have to take the time to enter in the gallons, how hard is it to put? an R next to it, in what class, or a C into it. Mm -hmm. That's that's the only thing no, that I No, th I think just going down to two rates is right there. You've eliminated the huge hassle. And then, uh, I think it's a huge hassle. It's what? just, it's just because you're either one or the other. It's there is either, either, the either an R, a school, or a commercial. I, but that's okay. If you want to call, if you want to do the commercial and schools together, I, I have no problem with that. It's, do you know what I'm, I mean? Is there any reason we couldn't set the rate uh, for six months and then set it again for the spring reading? Like what What makes us have to set it for the I whole year? I think you have to send out, we send out bills twice for that? We do send out bills yeah, twice, but, but I didn't know if there was, you know, it would give us six months to really hammer out and get I the documentation and the spread it out. I just don't know if that's something. I'm not, I think one of the problems too is, and um, you know, I can hear you that you're sympathetic to the rate payers. Um, I, think all I think that you have to face things and I just think that's how you, it's only fair to do it that way. And you also have to give people some um, uh, information ahead of time that you're planning to do that. And, but also that office 
gets the complaints. They get people, and they have to defend things that they had nothing to do with deciding. And so past, you know, to go up and then down, a little piece here and that, that we really need a plan and, and to put that in place and to have it justified. Um, this is not a bad idea. Now, I, I'll just say that I was not here a year ago when you were having these conversations. No one's informed me. You know, I was aware that you went up on rates. I think that might have happened as I was kind of here. Um, but I was not involved in the build up and lead up and discussion for that. So, um, can't really say, well, remember this and this is why. It but was, it was well, we were faced, well, we were, we've been faced with Right. These huge expenses, which we know are coming one way or the other, we just don't know. We just haven't done them yet. Right. But it's a problem. And but we, we made it. I think that it was abundantly clear, and I, I know everybody in town doesn't watch this, and so that, that the sewer rates are go going up and they're going yes. to continue to go up. Right. Yeah. And uh, you know whether well, we do we it. Pay, we've been paying too low for so many years. Well, and so that point, I can't think of the the people that we applied for the grant for, yeah, past they, works and stuff like that, they think our sewer rate's a joke. <laughs> I know they do. Well, when I went first to well, get that, that was a few years ago, they told us that we had to increase the rates. Yeah. Or and I think we're okay now. Exactly. Put an application so, in. I, know. So I, I, I think we're okay now, because I asked, you know, I asked a series of questions, sure. some of which you brought up, of Dave Cricket, and he responded yeah. against my knowledge. So, um, I think we're, looking good for, on that aspect of things. That's another justification that we really should have. Um, Does that continue to work from the old one, or are we hiring him again? No, this was just a follow-up memo of the conversation and some uh, uh, questions to answer. Question about whether whether you can charge an institutional rate, uh, whether uh, our rates would are too low to qualify us, or will will be fine. And it's the USDA program. Mm -hmm. so you'll see that in the memo. Yeah. Um, and you know, he just made a recommendation, and, which is a little different than what I did. But it's your decision, and you've got the information in front of you. You've got Kip's information, his information, uh, mine, and um, which integrates. Well, Next year will be coming from Kevin. <laughs> we work. Well, I think, I know we shouldn't be probably reducing too much, but uh, but I, I really feel yeah. like if we reduce the minimum bill to 80 is, is, is a good thing. So it's helped. I think it helps. don't have much, uh, or don't use much, and they're maybe right. single and they're and home and elderly. And, and they're being conservative. And, I'm fine with that. Um, so I want to do that. I don't mind. The ten dollars is reasonable because we're we're going to at least do the three million dollars or a couple million dollars headworks project. It sounds like we're going to do something. So, so yes, that makes sense that we're easing into it. Um, but I, but get, given the pushback from Barbara, I don't want to really go to the split rate. This billing, and I don't know whether we can revisit it. Six months or six months. in the next month, and then plan, you know, get right. people a heads up morning at town meeting. But I don't want to just go up 50 cents or a dollar. I want to go up what the truth, what just just like we're going up on the residential, or, easing or into the not, residential. If not capturing it all, Carolyn, you're, you're going in certain steps that are planned in a five year period. But and you, and you and you give go. people up, like yeah, I said, maybe we don't want to go to 16 dollars, but. We're going to tell people that they have to come right because, be yeah, this is where we're going to be so we can afford the repairs, and this is how your costs are going to go up so that these institutions can budget it. But I don't, and I don't have a problem with that. I, I just feel like we don't have the true expense that, they're, that they are costing us, and we need to do that. We, we need to do that. More. If you if, if you, that's what you're saying is that they if, cost us more money. If you use that as an argument, you're going to have everybody in here saying justify the true cost. Yeah, but I, I thought you were just saying that this is we are easing up to the we are that's what I'm saying. Works. If you, we're going to if do you, the head work now, right? right? But if you increase it at that dollar, you know it probably is not enough. I'll be the first to agree, but I can't tell you how much is enough. You know. Right, but, will, but what I'm saying is that I don't have a problem if they come in here and complain. 
I think the uh, I think so. The then why not raise it the dollar if you don't? Like the it. scope of work will hopefully zero in on not the true cost, but really close to what we're going to need, and then we can plan out a ten-year or five-year steps in raising up what we're going to need to get to. And then you give people a heads up at town meeting this year, and here's your plan, and this yeah, is where we're we should going. have that if we move on that timetable. We should have that. Shoot, Jim. Just a quick comment. I, I understand where Kip's coming from because we all know we're going to have that cost. Yep. We all know we have to do the Headworks project. Yep. It's just what we don't know is what size it should be. But uh, through this whole conversation, I hope we don't lose sight of could we possibly make uh, the scope works, cleaning that up a top priority and getting that out as soon as possible because it would really help resolve cleaning. a lot of what we're, we're discussing. We're cleaning what up, Jeff? I, uh, the scope of work. Oh, cleaning up the scope of work. Right, right. yes. yes. Oh, so yeah. when we ask for if we make that a priority, and I, I just hate to see that get lost oh, in the no. shuffle here, no, no, no. if no, we can make that a priority and get that out as soon yeah. as possible to you know five, six companies, yeah, yeah. get the ball rolling, yeah, you know, absolutely. and we finally, after a year and a half on the study committee, I think we've finally got a, a game plan here. And if we can move it forward, right. it will help impact everything that Correct. everybody was discussing. And, and the sooner the better. Right. And, and, so what, what Carol was saying, if we had a dollar amount of what it was going to cost, and mm -hmm. say we could divide that cost out over six years, because it was going to take six years to actually get this all done. It doesn't happen overnight. Then it, sure, it's very easy to sit down and say, okay, we have to raise X amount of dollars to, to pay for this. But we don't. We don't know what that is. And what I'm saying is if we raise it a dollar now, then that's not enough, but it will help. It's going in the right direction. And I think that, I know I, I don't pay, have a sewer bill, but if I was a sewer, my business was on sewer, I'd appreciate getting a small increase two or three years in a row, then all of a sudden getting a huge increase. At once. I think that's what we're talking about. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I think that's where we're, we're all talking about the same thing. We were talking about having a split out rate, a commercial rate. Yeah. And and I I don't agree to have a, a, a commercial split out rate that doesn't reflect the real uh, what it's really going to cost. Okay. I, and I, I, think, I, and I think the internal administrative piece is unresolved from your perspective. Um, that's what I hear you saying. Okay. I, 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 can we at least talk to Barb? Yeah, I'm sure they'll you talk to her. We've had many conversations. We'll talk well, to we're not going to do it. I mean, it, I'm not going to waste her time or mine. No, you know, because I, it, I, I think it still needs to happen. I think it needs to happen because we've been talking about it. We've been talking about it over a year, right? You can, right? Do it, you can do it a year from now. Or six months from now. Yeah, Why couldn't we do it six months from now? I don't know. I'm just curious as to why I hear two different stories. Well, then we'll find that out because there might be a valid reason, or, the, or maybe your hunch is correct and there's not a valid reason. I don't know. I trust Barbara. I, I'm not saying I don't trust her. I'm just saying that it's, you're it's not. not believe, you're not believing her. That's what you're saying, I, I think. She's saying, well, I think we do need to resolve that. Do this because we, we have been talking about a split rate for a while. She's saying no. Let's just find out what that reason is. Yeah. She's, she's just saying that she's too. explaining, you know, the details of that, all the work that they need to do to code, determine who is, who do you consider commercial, who do you, you know, do we rely on assessors? You know, she do doesn't we, have time in the next two weeks to do that. So it's not. I can't. Right. I don't know how long it would take. With all her, whatever else she's working with. Well, if we went, if we went to a, a split rate versus, a, you know, a triple rate, I mean, can you ask her? I think it's the same, same thing. It's still a matter of code. It's not the number of rates that right. would add to it. But Correct. I will let her speak for herself, but right. I'm, I'm doing the best I can to represent what she's expressed, both with me, with me and Kip in the same room, separately with me in the meeting with. Um, and by email, we had conversations. I sent her something well, and said, email, "Does yeah. this reflect what what is your experience?" So it, it, it's been discussed, and I let her know that we'd be talking about it tonight. And sent her information, and also let her know that you would be in touch with her again to, 
talk about it. I appreciate it. So, well, um, I make a motion to uh, adjust the minimum usage charge to $80 per billing period. Service fee will be $200, $100 per billing period. And two oh, I thought we were going to go down. Eight. Eight. Oh, on both? Yeah. Oh, I didn't catch that. Sorry. Uh, the service fee doesn't going to change. Oh, I thought that yeah, was that's what I thought. It was the minimum usage, right? Oh, okay. Minimum usage. Right. The no. The service fee. No. It's the minimum okay. usage. Right. So, <laughs> recap my motion. My motion to make a motion for FY18 sewer uh, user rates, uh, user Billing. Oh, I'm sorry. You're, you had recommended the service fee go up to 220, and um, from 200. So, do you, leave, you can you leave it the way you got yeah. Okay. So, um, you sure you're okay with keeping it at 100? No increases. Or um, how can I put this? <laughs> <laughs> with my short tenure in the municipal world, uh, it's fine. It's a good thing that you can send people bills and have no repercussions, but in the real world, you go bankrupt in six months. Um, okay, so we're going to keep the service fee at um, two hundred dollars a year, not so, go up to two twenty. Can I recap the motion? Yes. Okay, so um, FY eighteen sewer user rates. User usage billing, uh, $10 per 1,000 gallons, minimum usage charge of $80 per bill, service fee $200 per year, $100 per bill. The FY 2018 sewer rate of $10 per 1,000 gallons will be based on the actual water usage uh, for winter period and abatement for summer water use above 125% of each individual's previous winter use, residential accounts only. As long as the abatement is greater than twenty-five dollars, no abatement for business or tenant occupied properties. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. That was painful. That was actually good. Actually, that was a good discussion. Thank you, lay the groundwork for that. We do need to move forward. Yeah, we do, and I think there's. I am feeling much better about, and I, and I thank you, Jeff, for coming, um, because I feel much better about where we're going. I mean, one of the biggest problems is you just can't, I couldn't visualize how, you know, everyone just keeps talking about so much money, but we're not visualizing an actual, what's our goal here, um, and, our, and how we're going, walking down this path. And so I feel like it's been clarified. We are going to work with Barbara I mean, I, I think we need some more analysis. Do, can you know how hard is it to go to the tree rate? I mean, I still hope or two because you don't think institutional is even makes well, sense. I, I, Nobody else really typically that, does that. Yeah, but I think we have unusual. I think we have unusual circumstances. Very quickly, though, I, I would like to uh, acknowledge Josh for all this help oh. that he's provided mm -hmm. to the sewer study committee. Yep. Uh, Second half. He's, he's been valuable. Yeah. He's done a great job with us. And, uh, you know, to that, I would like, I think this is what you were saying before as well. He did present the scope. I've included it for you. I think it's your decision whether to go for it. Um, cool. And I would When do you want us to make a uh, motion? Uh, well, I'd like to look at it. It's not finalized yet. Josh wanted to take another look yeah. at it, and so I wanted to take another stuff, look at right? it. So, um, for your next and meeting. And the committee, I think, I think Bruce. And, uh, and Bruce. let me just. St. Peter's had we, some we, ideas. Yeah, I, I think oh, yeah, we're, sure. we'd all like to take a few weeks uh, and, and come up with some suggestions. Uh, and we're all going to channel to Wendy. Uh, Josh is going to revisit this as well, but I don't. I really would not want this to drag on. I'd like to right. get it done. You know, maybe not by our next meeting, but you know, early. What's your next? We yeah, I was thinking. What's your next? Um, sort of study? Would you guys make a motion? Or? We already did. We made a motion to, to send this forward. to them. Yeah. And then, oh, so they just individually have to fund Our it. next meeting is uh, December 21st. So if we can have it done yeah. by then, or, I mean, we, we can certainly well, do it before that. Oh, we can I do would it like on. you to have, frankly, I would, they, people were asked at that meeting if they had input to direct it to me and I, Josh sure. and I, and yeah. gather that, and we'll, I would like to present it to you on the 29th. Right, right. And, and I, 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 Josh can take it, can kind of work with you from there. 
What he had suggested was, this does not need to be an RFP or an bid or any of that. Basically, this is his recommendation, was to send this to several of the consultants who do this kind of work, and he's familiar with all of them, and negotiate. Send it, see what you get back from them, and then you can work with them and see who you want to work with, who you feel comfortable work with, who you trust, etc. That's my recollection of what he recommended, that's the process. So. And then could we work on resolving the split rates? I mean, I That's a separate I, issue, but it's integrated into this in terms yeah. of a longer term, uh, you know, what, what right. we do need to do in order to afford these things we're Correct. suggesting you need to do. So, but let's keep the conversation going on that as well, especially the internal issues. Yeah. yeah. This, what, this definition is this definition. So, um, I'm here, I'm here about that. Yeah. yeah. So, um, including, I think, taking a look at the management. Building separate building structure. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm going to come. Okay. All right. So I think that we have a game plan. And, um, that, that's actually the basic having yeah. a game plan. I, no, it, it, and, and if you have a game plan, if I'm very good have the infrastructure, that's my goal while I'm here, is to try to get these things that I not move forward, moving forward. I'm really with right. you on that. But, but, but if you have the real information, then you can justify it. And I have no problem arguing with that. So, do you yeah. need, will you probably revise this or do you need a signature on something? Uh, yeah, we have. We, uh, what do you think? Do you uh, I, I, I um, put the I'll here? ask Barb to sign it if, and if she needs it to in order Barb. to. Do you have one you want me to sign? Or is yeah, why don't we sign I I oh, oh, you know, can initial good. it. Perfect. Yeah, I think that'll be good. Next item on the agenda is um, the proposed um, BYOB policy. Mm -hmm. um, Wendy said just the first reading. I, I, I didn't have any issues with I didn't that. either. Um, so I feel comfortable with it. The only um, question I had, and I asked Wendy about it, is, um, you know, I, I think, again, I think it's important that people have the TIPS training, so that's yep. not an issue. But they are not actually serving the alcohol. So when people bring in on alcohol, how are they being able to monitor the consumption to um, cut people off? That was my only question. And how do they cut them off if they're not giving them? That's right. Well, well as well, I said, it's that they can observe, they're trained and training yeah. to observe behavior. And, and they're just, but <laughs> basically they can, they can not let them take the phone. Well, right, and it doesn't seem like there's any um, we, really other solution that's to, uh, you know, as a policy that's written around. So even though that is a concern of mine, that's a concern whether we have a policy. And we would um, still approve each resident, right? This doesn't just create a blanket. This is a policy. Can... What happened, if you recall, with Gianni, he yep. needed one. Right. And uh, he wanted to bring your own. It was the first time he got a request, and we discovered you don't we need to ask. If you don't have a policy, anyone can do it. So now they, they do need we to need ask. This if we will not have any yes. kind of, you know, and then, and that guidance way for, for people for bringing around. So, so then we could judge the, the establishment if it's a place where people are going to be for an extent. I mean, most people are going out to dinner and bring a bottle right. of wine. Right. The, 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 license, the people like who, who want alcohol to you know, be able to serve at their business or have it, want it for the income of that. They don't want to bring your own for the right. most part. I don't know why uh, the other business that went and did it on his own, we discovered he had the right to do that because we had no policy. Yeah. You know, if that's something he's interested in, most people want the license. Yeah. Um, and so this sure. is really when you run, a lot of communities have this because they run out of licenses. We yeah. don't have that problem. Right. Yet. Okay. <laughs> you know how that problem may not, I mean, the state laws may change by the time we get to our limits. So we had talked about this and to mm -hmm. even the playing field. Uh, you know, when you would issue the, the common vitro's license to Johnny Figs with conditions, and these this, these are some of the conditions that you had, but we worked to develop policy. Um, so. 
to uh, then this is first reading. I put it on for first reading so you don't, you know, but, but we'd like to do it before January. If somebody, I, I don't know the answer to this, mm -hmm. uh, if somebody has an alcohol license, uh, they're required to have a certain type of liability insurance. If you have none, uh, are you still required to have that same type of liability if you're allowing people to drink their own alcohol? Um, I don't think we, I need to look into this, but I don't think we need to, but that's, on that's that. Yeah. And that's state law that requires the uh, yeah. so you have to have a liability if you have a liquor license. Right. This is a bit of insurance for them, frankly. Yeah. That's why I look at it. Um, so I make a motion that we approve these. Um, just get it done. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm going to try to do that. With, I, you know, let you have a meeting yeah. with it. And then I think that's in general that's good. I, and, and I, and no, I appreciate you yep. discussing the, my concerns, but there doesn't seem to be a fix for that, so it doesn't really matter. I mean, I mean it's not going to change. So by having this policy, do people who have that bring your own policy have to get a They have to come to us. Come to us. Yeah. Otherwise, we don't, because we don't have a policy, they can just... Yeah, we won't know. This way, we also won't know yeah. where there's... Yeah. It might be. So I was going to say, there's some of the things, you know, if you control the alcohol in your establishment, you cannot serve someone who's underage. And to bring your own, how do you know? I mean, you can well, ask. No, 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 no. They have that's to part show of the tips ID training. if there's any question. Okay. That's part of the tips training but as well. Yes. That's, that's, you know, obviously, right. if, you, if you hire someone down, then they're probably going to ask this. They're only going to cart Carol. <laughs> been recovered for a while. But um, you know, if, if there's anybody in question they have to show their that's part of the part of this in having the policy. Is that you don't have underage. Okay. okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, thank you, Wendy, because thank Yeah, you very helpful. And and key. And key. And and I, <laughs> this was this was really nice now to know that people just can't do this. Um, if, if, is this um, yes, yes. yes? We are doing yes. I know it's been a long time. Sorry. Um, is it Saturday yet? <laughs> I know. Um, so, where do we have to post this at now that we? I mean, how, how does people be aware of that? Um, I think we'll put it on the website. We will send it to those who have. Um, we'll let the health agent know who does restaurant inspections. And oh, that's a good idea. Okay. As long as we can do that. Yeah. Maybe whoever um, has a conviction license. Yeah. Maybe um, Key, if you could put put this on, um, you know, a photocopy, a couple copies, um, so it's you know on one page, you know, so it's not too two sided. Yeah. Two sided. That's what I mean. <laughs> it has been a long day. Um, <laughs> Then and give some to Dick so that he can make sure that the couple of establishments that we have in mind have it. I think there's only one that I'm aware yeah. of. Yeah, I know, but there's who knows. Actually, All right, yeah. we'll, we want to give it out when we do the license renewals in January. Okay. The competition yeah. um, Next item on the agenda is the um, amendment for the purchase and sale of the New England Bakers. Um, did you get the lawyers? I did. Um, I have one. So, um, you did discuss this in executive session. You had conversations with council. This integrates the desires that you had. They agreed to the caveat. Um, and this is um, what you, you voted to support. Based on the caveat, um, what is the day? Is there a date at all that says? I think it's 60 days from this date that today that we sign that. Yeah. Is it from this date? Uh, so once this is being inserted, terminated, the question is Did you get that on? Um, it was delivered at 10 a.m. on the 20th business day after the buyer's contingencies have been satisfied. What are those? All right, read the next yeah. provided, no, however, no, no, no. in no event shall the time... Yeah, 60 days from execution. 
okay. execution of this. Yes, Ex of both okay. parties here. Gotcha. They signed it. Okay. And they were, yeah, they signed it. was just sent to me. It's gone. Right. Okay, yes, but it's good yeah. enough. <laughs> okay. That's good enough. Yeah, I've got this. Um, I don't think it's so I just want to make sure you read well, that. That's okay. This is their attorney. Yeah, this is our attorney. This is so. Oh, we, we, we were somewhere. I don't think I've seen that. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll have you look at it before we go. Just so yeah. you get it. Even though it doesn't say a specific date, it's my understanding with contracts. It, it's the date you sign. It's everything that, goes off of there. That language isn't today. It is, but it doesn't have a specific date in here. Right. So that's right. What I'm to. So if we sign this today, the 60 days starts today. Okay. Yeah. There. But this is this explains the whole process. So okay. The date is on the back over your signatures. It is, yes. Yeah. So, before we sign, uh, here, why don't you read this quick? And I think I told you um, there are state resources involved. There's a business attorney that was called in for this. Yeah, that's who that is. From. And it gives us the ability to move <coughs> quickly if we're seeing that this is not happening. But. They've gone back to the bank, the banker they, that they worked with bank. before, yeah. who left the bank that he was with when they first started working on this, and that's going well, I understand. So they're serious. Oh, uh, yeah. It's so exactly. early. <laughs> well, I went to that C's meeting, and uh, um, you know, all the right. people the, were there. Seeds. The seeds. Comprehensive economic development. Study. No, it's a um, strategy plan. This is the, the county county thing. If you have to participate, if you get X number of dollars for developmental stuff. Do we? Yeah, we do. I mean, over the years, the different ones. It's just a planning document that I think yeah. all the counties do them all over the country. It, it allows like Western Mass guides investments and. Economic yeah. development activities. That's how we got the grant for um, expediting. Oh, really? Yeah. The, the expediting. How you got into this, the pickle, so to speak. for the bakery? Is this going to be the last extension? Yes. This yes. will be it. This an out. They either do it or they don't. Correct. And, um, and, and if we see it's not happening along the way, we can start exercising other options. If we have a, you can come up and look at this if you want. It explains what happened. I mean, part of it truly what happened was our fault. We interrupted the process. Right. No, I, I understand that, but you know, at, at some point, it almost gets to the point where enough's enough, and yep. you know, let's walk that's away why, from it. That's why the board added the caveat. Even if we, why don't you just look at this while we vote? Even if we have, have to sit on the property for a little bit or whatever, mm -hmm. I think we, the town would be better off. Thank you. Um, I, th I think this is going to work. Um, I make a motion um, move to sign the 11th amendment to the purchase and sale agreement with New England Natural Bakers. No second motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Let's do it. So, Thank you. 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 Refer back to the uh, unannotated agenda because there are items on there. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. I interrupt your train of thought on the sign oh. of this, but there are items on there that aren't on the annotated because they don't really need language help. So, mm -hmm. um, so then the next Number five. Um, agenda item is um, oh, um, we have a resignation of Ben Weidman from the CBA. I'm sorry, I missed that. 
It wasn't on the southern agenda. Um, ben, who is a wonderful um, CBA person, has um, is moving out of town, so he has resigned. So we have a hearing at the CBA. Um, we talked about the budget process we're going to do on the 29th. So the next item on the agenda is um, appointments to a South County EMS. Sure. Um, hop over there. Um, so let's see. I, I make a motion to appoint uh, at Abigail Canby, uh, South County Emergency Medical Staff EMT Basic per diem for the term beginning November 15, 2017, and ending June 30th, 2018. Given at Deerfield, Massachusetts, this 15th day of November 17th. I'll second. Is there any further discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And uh, I nominate uh, Joshua uh, C. Coates, South County Emergency Medical Service uh, Paramedic per diem for the term beginning November 15, 2017 and ending June 30th, 2018, given at Deerfield, Massachusetts, this the 15th day of November 17th. I'll second. 2017. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, just did you um, mention the rates? Uh, no, they weren't on these, but I can do that. So uh, right let me let me read this as well. This is a, a, a memo from uh, Zach Smith, South County EMS Director. Honorable Board, I respectfully request that you make the following per diem appointments for South County EMS. These appointments are for two highly qualified and enthusiastic local providers to help fill scheduling needs and increase local responder base. Abigail S. Uh, Candy is an experienced EMT who comes highly recommended by our agency's uh, existing personnel. As a local EMT with current experience in high volume and challenging environment, she will be a great asset to our community and is looking forward to working uh, shifts and responding to emergencies as they are dispatched. Her compensation will be the standard EMT basic per diem compensation, grade two, step one of 1560 an hour. Uh, Joshua C. Coates is an experienced paramedic who currently works full time for the city of Northampton. Josh uh, received his paramedic education locally at uh, the GCC paramedic program and is highly knowledgeable with our EMS system and the unique challenges working in our coverage area can, that our coverage area can present. Uh, Josh recently moved to the area and is looking forward to working shifts and responding to emergencies as they come in. His compensation will be the standard paramedic per diem compensation, uh, grade four, step two of 2196 an hour. Um, I would amend our um, previous votes to um, include grade two, step one of 1560 an hour for um, Abigail, and grade four, step two of 2196 an hour for Joshua. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We are official. Thank you for reading that. Sure. Oh, you know what, Trevor? Oh, maybe the wrong I'm sorry. No, 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 no. It's all right. Oh, there's different. Oh, okay. Sorry. We well, used to have little stickies on there. I know. I had a clean coffee. So, um, I was trying to be efficient. Do you have the agenda with the new business on it? Uh, um, yes, I do. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, no, that's okay. Here you go. Sorry. Let's. This came up today. Um, Okay, do you want some background? Yes. Um, 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 Steve Barrett from the Conservation Commission called me today and asked if you could please tonight um, designate um, uh, uh, they work with, as you know, the land use board work with consultants on particular peer reviews. Um, uh, they've been informed, I then talked to one of these consultants, I one, one, then read the Ethics Commission advisory on this. Apparently, the Ethics Commission has determined that consultants who do work for communities need to be designated a special, special municipal employee, there's a whole category around that, explain that some other time, um, in order to work again in the town, for that town, if they've done any work, within, within a year, if they've done any work for any other entity, business in town. I don't, it's um, odd to me, but do you, do you know this? Yes, I, I, I don't have a problem doing the special municipal employees. Um, it's just the only problem is, do you have the list of people who he wants? Because we should be 
Well, I, the consultant itself said we, what she has given to the communities um, are just who wetlands the way I have it here. Um, I know, I'm used to naming. Actually, no, when I've done these uh, policies in towns, we name the positions. And that's exactly what she's suggesting, wetlands consultants. Now, I think we need to look at this bigger picture. I was hoping council would call me back and perhaps name our planning board consultants and, um, as well. Well, so, it's, it's fine. But, it's but for now, they, they're needing to move on with something, which is why he asked me to put it on. Oh, it, it's no problem. Then I make a motion we um, designate our wetlands consultants as special municipal employees in the town of Deerfield. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, uh, thank you Steve. They are, no, 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 no. But they, they can be different people. But, they, uh, but usually what we do is... We've got about three or four that they've worked with. Yeah, yeah, usually what we do is we list the three or four. When we, I know. What we, what we have done in the past okay. is we list um, the ones that we think that we're going to use. And we sort of do it uh, that year. So in other words, it's right, I understand. Um, I mean, I'm perfectly okay with this. It's just that it's to me. I agree um, with you. I agree with you. Since okay. they are in town positions, and it could be. Um, but um, if there's any kind of legal, I'm trying to remember her name. I spoke oh. to her, Sarah. Well, it's just that if it goes, if it goes, if there's issues in the court, it's better to have them specifically listed. Right. So, have you done it last? Well, we do, um, we do, do board of health things a lot of times for, um, we designate specific, uh, special municipal employees, but we list the names of the people. I mean, it's, it's not a big deal. This right. is a good I, thing. I, I asked that of her. Yeah. She said, oh, um, I just could tell them what was the songs. So, I did what she felt but, would cover her. No, that's okay. But if you can find... If you can get from Steve who who the people in the long run he is, then we can just do an amendment that these are the special okay. things for the company. We'll put that on for the next agenda. Yeah, like the list just, of names. Yeah, or it's anybody that that we hire as a consultant to help represent us in a situation, and you usually just do the blanket for the year. Like Sarah Campbell would be somebody. Yes, yeah. that would be. Yeah. Um, it's only from a, it just gives them better, if we name them specifically. No, I, I understand you. I, I, I asked that at the consultant. She said, no, you don't have to, but I, I agree with you. Well, it's just in the past we've done that, so whatever. Okay. Can I make a public service announcement? Sure. Okay, yes. the uh, oh, 35th yes. Annual Deerfield Police Association Craft Fair will be held Saturday, November 25th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Frontier Region School, 113 North Main Street. Uh, free parking and admission. Come support our local Saturday event with us and, uh, and over 60 local vendors. Uh, super raffle and crafter silent auction. Morning snacks of coffee and donuts along with a delicious lunch with soup and refreshments uh, will be served by members of the Deerfield Police Association. We hope you will come. Yes. And thank you for everything for that. Um, it's announced. Can you make sure this is on our website? Oh, yeah. I will. Yeah, I'll, I'll be at the 29th. Yeah, it might be. I think that it's supposed to be up. So. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure. Yes, I'll be, I'll be at the 29th. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll be gone. Do you have any public comments, you guys? I hope not. We're tired. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce, Bruce St. Peter's is in here, so. He's um, watching, though. Yeah, I know. Don't, don't call Don't call in. Don't call We're going home. Yes. Yeah. I, I have an ICS class tomorrow and a test. i got to get home and study. Um, okay. And Wendy, poor Wendy's been working late last night, early this morning. Yeah. Emailed you at 5.30 this morning. It is, when, is, it is a, a tw officially a 12-hour day right now. And it was 10 and a half yesterday. I think you're appropriate to write your Saturday thing in Saturday YLP. Right. Yes, it, you may need it. <laughs> no, no, we're not like Okay. Um, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.